Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening and morning all over the world. Well, welcome to the first Tsunami World Conference Muse uh, Tsunami Museum Conference uh, held in Sendai, uh, Japan. Uh, this is to commemorate the World Tsunami Awareness Day of the 5th of November. Uh, we have a variety of agenda today, but uh, I, want to I would like to first thank for the participants uh, to this uh, meeting room in uh, Irides uh, Tohoku University. Uh, we have been, uh, it, it has been snowing uh, since yesterday, so, but uh, many of you uh, attended uh, in person, so I appreciated your effort to come here. It's been 12 years since the devastating tsunami of uh, 2011, and uh, finally this uh, Tsunami Museum Conference came to Tohoku in Sendai. So I'd like to welcome this uh, conference to come to the, um, the tsunami hit area. Uh, as we know, we forget human beings, forget things, but uh, we make some effort to not to forget about the uh, disaster. Uh, for that, how to do that? That is a uh, uh, question. Then this uh, mu role of a museum is, uh, could take a b important role because uh, some events happened organized in the university or the government or many places. Um, you know, people go there, but uh, not very much willingly to go. But for the museum, we love to go, the families and the kids, we love to go to museum willingly. So that's a big difference. So the, for the general public, it's very important uh, to have a somewhere we can go for having fun and learn something. So this is the role of a museum. And the tsunami museum or the tsunami or disaster related museums, there are many of them in Tohoku and in Japan and some part in uh, uh, other part of the world, in uh, foreign countries, uh, except Japan. Then uh, in Japan, um, there's a one very old museum uh, commemorating the uh, Kanto, a big earthquake in 2000, uh, 1923. It's been almost a uh, hundred year of history of doing it. So perhaps uh, that's one, one of the oldest uh, disaster related museums. And we know that, but uh, in, uh, in Japan we have some, but uh, we don't know what kind of a disaster related museum exists in the other part of the world. So we would like to have this meeting, have a good uh, soft networking uh, of the different museums in the world, or tsunami or disaster related museums in the world. It could be helpful for that. Then uh, a World Bosai Forum or the, this Densho, uh, 311 Densho Network, we'd like to use this opportunity to support this uh, kind of activity of the Tsunami Museum Conference. And this first time this conference, its theme is on the youth. So we will have uh, many presentations from the young people on this meeting. So we will learn uh, how, how young people are doing on this one. Then uh, for next, uh, disseminating the information to next generation, uh, it's very important to have the role of a youth because 50 years after, perhaps some people are still remaining in this uh, room, exist, uh, but uh, 100 years later, nobody would exist. So it's very important to have a linkage with young people and we, we hear from the activities and uh, we want to learn from them and uh, let us uh, um, propagate these activities uh, around the world. And uh, please uh, join hand for the young people uh, today is, uh, actively working on this, uh, acti uh, this um, disseminating and then learning activities and let us start the uh, conference. Thank you. So let us now move on to the first part of the um, conference, opening remarks. First one is from uh, Mr. Takei Shunsuke, the State Minister for Foreign Affairs of Japan, and it will be in the video message. Good afternoon. I am Takei Shunsuke, State Minister for Foreign Affairs. It is a great honor to participate in today's fourth World Tsunami Museum Conference and to make a few remarks on behalf of the government of Japan. The main topic of today's event is roles of youth and tsunami museums for resilience of societies. It's clear that younger generations will play a key role in making our society more resilient in the future. 
they are expected to be leading players in building a better society by pr protecting themselves, their communities, and the next generation from disasters rather than simply being a weak existence protected by society. To this end, it is essential to first raise awareness for disaster risk reduction among the younger generation. Taking tsunami disaster risk reduction as an example, since taking the lead in establishing World Tsunami Awareness Day in 2015, Japan has been conducting various activities such as public awareness events and evacuation drills around the world in collaboration with international organizations and in ways that include the younger generation. It's also very important for us to know the history in order to advance disaster risk reduction efforts. The history of humankind is it's consistent of accumulation of the experience of the battles against numerous natural disasters such as earthquakes, tsunamis, and typhoons. Based on our experience to be faced with disasters and the learned lessons, Japan has tried to make our state stronger to such disasters for a long time to achieve its resilience and build back better. Japan have accomplished its economic development and have built a safe and secure society today. We will continue to diffuse our policy for disaster risk reduction to the international community as well. On the other hand, it is not easy to learn from the cases of disasters I think that many people of the younger generation have yet to experience a disaster firsthand. Even though the cases of disasters with devastating damages, such as tsunamis, which have occurred only once in a hundred or thousand years, could be disappeared easily in the memories of the victims. It is very significant to take over such a crucial experience and lessons as fruit of blood, sweat, and tears of disaster victims to the future generation. We can also strengthen our preparedness for inexperienced disasters by, create, by increasing to share them, not only in Japan, but also with other countries. All of tsunami museums in the world are important facilities that play this role. In particular, I believe the accurate transfer of lessons from the past to the younger generation who will be the leaders, and but now still with lack of experience, will serve building promptly a safe and secure future. In addition to conveying the facts such as the year the tsunami occurred and the number of people who lost their lives, we should also encourage people to relieve sense of feelingness, such as the frustration and sadness felt by victims, as well as the difficulties and innovations they faced in recovery and reconstruction efforts beyond the difference of times and regions in order to raise awareness for disaster risk reduction more effectively. What kind of efforts will be effective in order to make them more aware of disaster risk reduction? I hope the discussions will be deepened with participation of younger generation and that future disaster risk reduction efforts will be further accelerated through this conference. I wish to express my sincere 
hope that today's effort, which transcends generational and regional barriers, will be fruitful for all of us and will contribute to the realization of a world where no one is left behind, in line with the principles of SDGs. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Takei. Uh, next uh, opening remarks by video is done by the uh, Ms. Kazuko Kori, Mayor of Sendai City, Japan. Sendai City of Kori, de gozaimasu. 第4回世界津波博物館会議の開催に際しまして一言ご挨拶申し上げます。本会議の本市での開催を大変光栄に存じますとともに、主催の国連防災機関、東北大学災害科学国際研究所、外務省の皆様に深く感謝を申し上げます。本日は遠方より会場にお越しいただいている方、また、世界各国の方々がオンラインで参加されると伺っております。世界各地の津波博物館には、国や世代を超えて経験や教訓を伝えるという共通の使命があると考えております。互いに、思いや使命を共有する貴重な機会が、この仙台を舞台に設けられることを心から嬉しく思いますと同時に、この会議を通じて国際的なネットワークが育まれるということを非常に心強く思います。本市の津波博物館といたしましては、震災以降、仙台市立荒浜小学校がございます。公開から5年が経過いたしましたが、今でも多くの方にお越しいただいており、これまでの来場者は40万人を超えました。本市では、震災を経験していない世代が増える中、記憶と教訓を未来に継承するため、市内すべての小学校において、震災以降の見学を実施するなど、若い世代への防災教育に力を入れております。伝承に努める一方、人間の力ではその発生を完全に抑えることができないのが自然災害でございます。本市では、幾多の災害を市民の皆様と共に乗り越えてきた経験を生かして、未来に向け、災害を乗り越える知恵や術である災害文化を創造し、日常に根付かせていくことが重要と考えております。災害文化を創造し、世界に発信する場として、現在、新たなメモリアル拠点整備の検討に取り組んでいます。将来的には、各地の津波博物館と連携しながら、世界の防災力向上に貢献できる施設となるよう取り組みを進めてまいりたく存じます。本日の会議を通じ、世界各国の知見や経験が共有され、活発な議論が行われることをご期待申し上げ、結びとさせていただきます。ありがとうございました。Thank you very much, Mayor Kauri. Uh, next, uh, we will have uh, uh, opening remarks from uh, Dr. Yuki Matsuoka, head of the UNDRR Kobe office, and also she's a co organizer of this event. Thank you very much, Professor Ono. Good afternoon, all the participants, including remote and then in person participants.、Um, I'd like to start my presentation with one important background to set the scene for this conference. World Tsunami Awareness Day itself was created in 2020, 2015 at the United Nations General Assembly by a resolution、um, jointly proposed by 142 countries. And then Japan took a leading role in the creation of the World Tsunami Awareness Day, which seeks to raise public awareness of the risks posed by tsunamis and to enhance tsunami mitigation and preparedness. The designation of November, November 5th as the World Tsunami Awareness Day comes from the famous Japanese story called Inamura no Hi. The story is about a village leader, Mr. Hamaguchi Goryo, who saved the lives of people in his village by setting fires to his sheaves of rice. By burning the rice sheaves, he urged people from the Belo village to flee to higher grounds. His actions swiftly disseminated information about a, about a giant tsunami s triggered by the Anse Nankai earthquake on November 5th in 1854 and led to the 
evacuation of the village, which he then helped to build back better the village itself. Today, Mr. Goryeo's grasp of the fundamentals of the disaster risk reduction are celebrated in this story, which transmits to new generation the importance of early warning systems, the value of traditional and local knowledge, and the need to build back better by investing in resilient infrastructure. This story goes along with the guiding principles of the Center Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction, which was adapted at the third UN World Conference on Disaster Risk Reduction held in this Sendai. UNDRR initiated the initiative of, of World Tsunami Museum Conference as part of our advocacy activities for this World Tsunami Awareness Day. The first World Tsunami Museum Conference was held in 2017 in Okinawa, Japan. The conference gathered about 70 people from eight countries, including representatives from nine disaster-related museums. The representatives shared information about their museums in terms of history, partnerships, and activities, and then also imparted the challenges they face. The conference resulted in the creation of a soft network of among soft network among participating museums. So these are the nine uh, museums, disaster related museums attended in 2017, first World Tsunami Museum Conference. And then in 2018, we organized the second World Tsunami Museum Conference in Tokyo. The conference was attended by over 150 participants to further facilitate sharing of knowledge and experiences the conference had, had a focus on roles of tsunami museums from chronological perspectives, keeping the memories and the lessons alive and then passing them down for future generations. Museum, museums from Japan, Indonesia, and China were represented and then shared their continuous efforts for preserving, maintaining, and managing their cultural assets and digital archives to, archives to ensure that their museums remain relevant and modern. The third World Tsunami Museum Conference was held in 2020 fully online. As the COVID-19 pandemic spread across the globe, the third museum conference was held online, which focused on how museums continue to raise awareness and educate the public on disaster risk reduction, despite the challenges of the COVID-19. We had representatives from six disaster museums from Japan, Indonesia, USA, Thailand, Portugal, and Turkey. The conference also included testimonies from tsunami survivors from 1946 tsunami in the Dominican Republic, the 2004 tsunami in Thailand, and the 2010 tsunami in Chile, and 2011 Great East Japan earthquake and tsunami. The conference also incorporated two virtual tours of two, two tsunami museums in Iwate, Japan, and Hawaii for online audience to learn about the museums virtually. Today, we are having this fourth World Tsunami Museum Conference in Sendai as a hybrid event by connecting with the world. Under the theme, the role of youth and tsunami museum for the resilient of societies, today's conference will discuss how muse disaster-related museums are contributing to making the youth more resilient to disasters. We have invited museums from Japan, Indonesia, USA, Thailand, to share their experiences. And also we have invited youth from Japan, Indonesia, USA, and China, so that we can hear directly from them, including students' reflection of the recent World Tsunami Awareness Day High School Student Summit in Niigata. Tsunami and disaster-related museums play a reading critical role in raising awareness and disaster preparedness. We are eager to continue this initiative of the World Tsunami Museum Conference so that future generations do not forget about disasters that happened in the past and then continue to learn from them to support our societies to be more resilient. The World Tsunami Museum Conference is now being organized every two years and then next one will be most probably in 2024. 
I'd like to end my presentation by sharing some photos I took during the head of UNDRR um, Ms. Mizutori's visit to Tohoku region in Japan. As you see from, this from these photos, we as UNDRR really value learning from the people who experienced the major disasters and then recovery efforts and processes. We also value of having dialogues with youth as youth are the agent of change and they are key actors for resilience, resilience building in our future. On behalf of the organizers, co-organizers, I really would like to express my hearty appreciation to all the participants, including in-person remote. I hope um, you will enjoy this conference and then you would learn from this conference. Thank you very much. Back to you, Professor. Thank you, Yuki, for setting the scene and uh, talking about the background, why we are doing this and the importance of tsunami-related museums. And uh, like the last word of uh, the youth, not as uh, someone to be helped, but as uh, someone, uh, the agent of change. I think that's the important word for moving ahead. So the next speaker for the opening remarks will be done by the uh, Dr. Uh, Mitsuru Haga. Uh, he's a special advisor to the president of Tohoku University in the area of promotion diversity. Uh, you have a floor. Um, thank you very much, Professor Ono, and those who made this great conference possible. As we all know, the Austrian philosopher Alois Liegel, in his book Der Moderne Denkmalkurz, which means Modern Cart of Monuments, published in 1903, expanded the concept of monument. Before him, before Liegel, monument meant just wanted, intended monument. But after this, his seminar work, it included also not wanted, not intended monument. Thus, the monument, which used to be just a positive instrument serving only those in power, became a positive and negative heritage of the whole human race. German term, Denkmal, consists of two words, Denken, which means to think, and Das Mal, to guide. Therefore, Denkmal means guide to think. That being the meaning, just wanted monument, but especially not wanted monument, shall be meaningfully the guide mark to think upon the past, the present, and the future of the whole human race. And of course, tsunami and other natural disasters are not wanted events, and their monuments are not wanted monuments. And if I may say so, with all due respects, tsunami museums are not wanted museums, but this is exactly why tsunami museums are remarkably significant guide marks to reflect upon the whole human race who live in Kansaiki, the period between the disasters. Today, we are uh, holding this World Tsunami Conference at Tohoku University, which has, I think, two meanings. Firstly, Tohoku University was hit by Great East Japan earthquake, and some of its institutions near the seashore were hit by accompanying tsunami. Even its inland campuses experienced devastating losses, like my office, which was inundated with the water from broken pipes, causing a loss of books and data. And secondly, Tohoku University is a university, where at the university, in principle, um, sapius, which means scientific and intellectual knowledge, is taught. Whereas today, we are here, on the contrary, we consider our ignorance. I always think that uh, generally at the university and at the museums as well, we teach and preach sapius, intellectual knowledge, too much. Isn't it more important to teach our failure to younger generations? Actually, Japanese folklorist Yanagita Kunio in 1953 advocated a concept of muchi no sozoku, inheritance of ignorance. In, in his conference addressed to younger generations, Yanagita said, I think it is important to teach the next generations what we did not know, our ignorance, that we have reached to this point, but furthermore, we could not understand. So we entrust the younger generations, the father duties based on our ignorance. In fact, a Zen concept, chi gu, sapius, Ungu, meaning profound ignorance and folly, is so dear to us, the Asian civilizations. 
Japan as number one by Ezra Vogel, published in 1979, may not be true anymore economically, but Japan has matured ever since, and today Japan is what we call Kadai Senshinkoku, an advanced country trying to find answers for a unique set of emerging issues such as environmental problems, declining birth rates, population aging, depopulation, energy supply problems, and natural and human-made disasters that few other countries have ever faced. Japan willingly shares with the world these challenges, issues, and failures Japan experienced and continues to face. After the Soviet Chernobyl incident, no report had ever been made, but in Japan, yes, after the Fukushima nuclear power plant's explosion caused by tsunami, we, we faced the problems of radioactive contaminated cultural properties. And Japan Japanese scholars published articles in international journalists, journals such as ICOM Museum International, explaining in detail how to rescue historical objects, revitalizing the local community of the Fukushima. Japan willingly shares with the world, not just wanted, but also not wanted issues. Not just our subuse, but also our good folly, failures, and challenges that we are facing. One measure to do so is, of course, the World Tsunami Museum Conference. I'm sure that we will have a very fruitful day today of subuse and good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Haga. Uh, very impressive talk, uh, the philosoph philosophical talk that uh, not wanted things and also w uh, passing down the information, the importance of the what did not know to the next generation. We scientists tend to say what we know to passing down, but what we don't know, didn't know to passing down. That's, uh, I think, remarkable um, uh, input. Thank you very much. Now we are moving to the keynote presentation. Um, Dr. Fumihiko Imamura the director of the IRIDES, the International Research Institute of Disaster Science at Tohoku University. Uh, he's going to talk about a uh, presentation on the uh, 311 Densho Road. Yeah. Please. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon uh, from Japan. Uh, I'm Kumihiko Imamura, the director of the IRIDES and also professor of the Tsunami Engineering. So today uh, I'm going to talk about the two, uh, 311 Densho Road to transfer the, our experiences and lessons learned from the 2011 earthquake tsunami uh, for the legend city. So uh, this is the slide. Uh, I would like to remind you again, we are living in the ring of fires where we cannot control and avoid such disasters. But the idea of the build back better, including risk management, should be reduce them. And we are living together with the harmony of the nature. So uh, this is the idea of the uh, natural sciences. Ocean plate generated at the ditch uh, from the inside side of the uh, earth. The plate moving horizontally uh, from the ditch to Japan, for example. And the ocean plate collide with the continental plate. The uh, ocean plate subducting at the trench where the stress accumulated to generate earthquake tsunami. So uh, this is the idea of the uh, earthquake and natural disasters. And I would like to inform you and introduce you the professor uh, Torahiko Terada uh, of the uh, University of Tokyo uh, more than 100 years ago uh, where we have the well-known message. Disaster come when people or we forget. If don't forget our experiences in the past and the lesson for disaster risk reduction, even if the hazard occurred, but there will be no major uh, damages, we believe. So uh, just uh, I would like again remind you, uh, we are in the beginning of the 21st century now, but uh, increasing the risk globally very much. So this is the example of the uh, figures showing the giant earthquake for the uh, tsunami uh, over the 100 years. So you can see the down the figures. Uh, so in the beginning of the 20th century, 
We have the, some major earthquake in Colombia and the Ecuador in the middle uh, of the America uh, in the beginning. After that, the activity of the gi giant earthquake become low. But in the middle of the 20th century, 20, uh, 52 Kamchatka followed by the 60 Chile and the 64 Alaska, you can see the very high peak of the major earthquake. And after that, they're very quiet. But we are now in the beginning of the 21st century. As you know, the 2004 Sumatra earthquake and the Indian Ocean tsunami occurred. 2,100 people have died at that time. And 2011, Japan, especially in the east part, uh, again, the major earthquake and tsunami are generated. So, the scientists cannot explain why we have such kind of the cycle. Uh, every 50 years look like the high activities. But uh, this is the data, so please remind this. So after the 2011 uh, Tohoku earthquake tsunami, Tohoku University started the new research institute, which is the IRIDES, International Research Institute of Disaster Sciences. So we celebrate this year uh, just uh, 10 years still baby. <laughs> we have the uh, research division of the seven and 36 fields according to the risk management cycle. Uh, before the uh, generation of the risk, we need knowledge of the science, uh, just the sciences to make a hazard map or risk evaluation. After the uh, Dame, uh, disaster happened, we need information, including the warning, uh, to let people evacuate. Uh, so information is very important, and we try to uh, stop the spread while extending the uh, damage and the hazard. So we, third, we have the human social study group, and especially uh, we have a special team of the disaster medical sciences to rescue and save their lives. So this is very unique. We are working together with the doctor. And fifth is the recovery and reconstruction study. And the third one is the transition to transfer the, our experiences and knowledge and lesson learned by using the digital archive. So we have the mission uh, of the EDDES to establish the practical disaster management study to identify and theorize the disaster-related phenomena in the each stage of the disaster cycle. Actually, we have four stages, before and just, after, and reco uh, recovered and reconstruction. To establish the area of the disaster management study, that should support the building society more resilient to the disaster, we believe. First director of the EDDES, uh, Professor Hirakawa, is the historian. So I am a second director. I'm majoring in the tsunami engineering. So combined natural and human and social, uh, including the history, are uh, working together here. So uh, this is an example of the, our product. Uh, by the, some analysis and the field work, we try to reconstruct the generation of the tsunami and the propagation of the tsunami at a time. So within 20 or 30 minutes, first wave attack to the Sandik area. It is a tsunami prone area. But again, the, from the south, a tsunami reached to the Fukushima and inside of the Sendai Bay. This is not a prone area. But uh, this time, the earthquake is so large and to generate more big uh, tsunami and uh, affect very wide area. Now, one and a half uh, hours passed. You can see still tsunami uh, continue to go and uh, uh, traveling to other places and others. So this is the oscillation of the tsunami and it continued for two days. So we cannot cancel at that time. And also, this is the another analysis by using the supercomputers uh, to uh, simulate the very detailed behavior of the tsunami. So you can see the typical uh, bay of the sandik. So tsunami is now coming 
So almost 30 minutes passed. So front of the tsunami now reached to the inside of the bay and reached to the coast. So this is uh, Rikuzen Takata. So where we have the good pine uh, forest like this, but the tsun first tsunami destroyed a uh, forest and you can see the change of the colors. So it means tsunami move the sediment and the sand change the topography, uh, so uh, you can see very complex uh, or complicated behavior of the tsunami. So first wave attack to the city of the Rikuzen Takada, and now you can see the second wave as the back. So back current tsunami also very, very strong, and destroyed and changed the topography, and you can see the impact of the tsunami through the uh, simulation. So now le let me explain an uh, example of the reconstruction uh, for the Gent city, combined structure and non-structure measured. It is very essential. So this figure is showing the uh, Sandik area again, the tsunami prone area. So through the past tsunami, 1896 or 1933, 1960, uh, many tsunami attacked to there. So that's why the Japan, Japanese government constructed a, a, a seawall like, like this. So you can see from the north to the south. So to protect the community uh, by the structure measured. So height sometimes exceeds 15 meters, average is uh, five meters. But at the time of the tsunami in the 2011, uh, much larger or higher than the level of the sea wall. So this showing the uh, height of the tsunami. So the wall cannot protect the community perfectly, but to uh, su surely reduce the energy uh, passion. So, uh, so we can uh, understand the limitation of the structure, but also uh, some rule of the structure. So that's why the Japanese government uh, proposed the two kind of level. Uh, level one is the largest tsunami in the modern time. It means 100 years. Maybe we have the, some frequent tsunami, uh, once or two one second, uh, twice uh, over the 100 years. So we need a uh, hard type uh, structure mainly uh, to protect the human lives and also pro uh, properties and economic activities as much as possible. But in the case of level two, it is the large, more largest tsunami in the, our history, for example, thousand years. So we cannot uh, stop the perfectly. But we try to uh, uh, have the priority to protect the human lives uh, by evacuation or uh, by using the non-structure measured. And also to uh, reduce the economic growth uh, as much as possible, especially preventing the occurrence of the severe second uh, damage like this. So actually we have the Sendai framework for DRR uh, in the 1950. Uh, we have the four priority at the time. So I would like to show you the last one, uh, priority four. It is the uh, build back better in the process of the recovery and reconstruction and uh, rehabilitation and reconstruction. There is a need to strengthen the disaster preparedness for response, take action in the anticipation of the event, and to uh, make ensure, uh, m make sure the capacity effective response and recovery at all levels. So recovery, rehabilitation, and reconstruction phase is very, very important and a critical opportunity for Build Back Better. So I'd like to show you the example of the Build Back Better at the Sendai by introducing the multi-layer uh, protection uh, for the tsunami legend city uh, at the Sendai learning from the, our history. So this is a photo uh, in 2011. So tsunami destroyed the coastal community, but it did happen uh, almost the sa same way uh, in the 2011, uh, just 400 years ago. 
。At the time, the,、uh, Mr. Date Masamune, the samurai,、uh, so he decided to the construction by introducing the new ideas. So people are not allowed to live along the coast. However, he developed the、uh, new uh, field, not rice field, but the salt、uh, field, salt, by using the salt water bring by the、uh, tsunami. And also,、uh, they planted the green belt to protect the tsunami and the storm surge, and also keeping the good environment. So we follow the idea of the Date Masamune.、Uh, we introduce this multi function,、uh, but now we have technology. So in the front, we have the concrete seawall, but、uh, try to、uh, low, as low、uh, as possible. And also utilize the green belt、uh, in the behind. And also, we have the shelter, and we utilize the highway to elevate、uh, work at a dike. So, this is a new idea at the Sendai、uh, for the Tsunami Legend City. So, this is just the history, uh, uh, some record uh, by the activity uh, by the Asian people, including Date Masamune or、uh, other cases. This is a thousand years ago. So,、uh, anyway,、uh, now it is the、uh, current stage of the Build Back Better at the Sendai. So, you can see the, some green area uh, not uh, allowed to live, but、uh, we move to the new residential area、uh, and we have to utilize the highway by、uh, constructing the steps. So, more uh, kind uh, for the elder people and the young. So, now le let me show you the activity of the Densho Road,、uh, which is a promotion organization、uh, to transfer the experience、uh, of the earthquake and tsunami in the past. And、uh, communi uh, communi uh, community and communication uh, about the、uh, lesson、uh, for the future disaster risk reduction. So, what is the Densho Road?、Uh, As I said, maybe, <laughs> then show is the transfer the, our experiences、uh, in the past to the future. Now, along the coast affected the area, many ruins and the exhibition facilities in this area affected by the 2011 are available to learn the fact of the disaster at the time. So, we try to make a network of the disaster memorial facility to conduct the various initiatives. And make a project related to the disaster risk reduction、uh, like this. So,、uh, through the, this activity, we hope to improve the awareness of the disaster prevention and also、uh, promote、uh, communication with the many people across the region and the national borders. And to help a kind of form to disaster resilient、uh, society and、uh, reconstruction the region. So, we have the, some、uh, definition of the memorial facility、uh, like this. So, we have the one, two, three, four,、uh, something like that. And actually, we have the three kinds of category、uh, first, second, and third. First one is very simple、uh, to the facility to one or、uh, two,、uh, you can visit and、uh, you can learn. And the category two, including the, some accessibility, easy to go there and some convenient, the, some access、uh, by using a public transfer. Third one is a, a kind of more facility uh, to uh, introduce uh, and provide the tour guide and storing terror activities. So, total, we have the 300 uh, facilities now along the coast. So, we、uh, promote some kind of、uh, preparedness activities, including the seminar、uh, every year and many places、uh, like this. And also conduct the,、uh, some tours、uh, to visit the affected area, especially the、uh, facility, museum, and memorial. So, now I would like to show you kind of the demonstration video、uh, to introduce the、so、kind of. So, here's the story of the story of、uh, survival, how you can survive through what anything is thrown at you. So, never to give up.
ここまで登ってみたらばこの手すりを津波が越えてきたそこ越えてきた She talked about her experience when she was a middle school student and the tsunami came and she described it in extreme detail it almost felt like I was there and the ground was shaking Something that I think that I can take with me from after hearing her story is the importance of talking to your family about what you're going to do if something like that does happen. It kind of just makes me think about how important it is to really think about that everything can just change in one day. You really have to cherish every one of those days. For me, this area, the Samika area, um, is an area that has great beauty. It has great seafood, but it also comes with the, the harsh climate and the, the dangers that are associated with、um, living so close to the ocean. During the whole experience, I was trying to imagine a tsunami that tall. I looked out from the height and I'm like trying to imagine everything being water. And I can almost see it, but it's still really hard to imagine. It kind of gives you hope when you come here and you see that not everything is bad, there's always a, a good side to, to different things. Yes, <laughs> this is one of the promotion videos. So、uh, you are welcome <laughs> to visit us and enjoy the food and the nature and also to learn our lessons. So uh, uh, we are conducting the,、uh, some kind of the tour、uh, for all of you、uh, to visit us,、uh, the one, not only one place and several places、uh, at your schedule. So,、uh, yes, seminars. Yes, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yes, and、uh, we, we have the, another project in the、uh, 311 Dental Road、uh, to compile the digital data、uh, to make a video archive, especially the activity、uh, of the、uh, rescue and some re、uh, recovery and reconstruction. Uh, so, some,、uh, some of them are not well known. The mass media、uh, cannot introduce, but、uh, we uh, make an、uh, interview uh, to make、uh, some kind of the,、uh, archive uh, to uh, transfer. So, this is just a remark,、uh, including the risk globally、uh, in the beginning of the 21st century. So, it continues. So, disaster came,、uh, will come when we forget. But we don't forget our past experiences and lessons.、Uh, so, even the hazard occurred, but、uh, there is no severe、uh, damage, we believe. And、uh, we introduce, I introduced in a reconstruction process for a legend community, combined structure and non structure. And、uh, especially the four、uh, priority、uh, in the Sendai framework for DRR are、uh, very important,、uh, especially the build back methods. So, lastly, I introduced the activity of the 311 Dental Road Promotion Organization、uh, to remind the lesson saved the lives. So, this is uh, very important,、uh, our message. So, this is the、uh, last slide. So,、uh, next year、uh, in the March,、uh, we have another opportunity to、uh, meet uh, all of you together,、uh, which is the third,、uh, world, was,、uh, third uh, world Bosai Forum、uh, to discuss more about the disaster risk reduction、uh, for three days. So, I hope、uh, you can see、uh, in the coming March. So, thank you very much、uh, for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank Professor you. Imamura. Please stay there for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would like to have、uh, some dialogue with you, <laughs> yes. if time remains.、Time. Yes. The, because we have、uh, high school students、yes. and here, and、mm -hmm. from uh, uh, the remotely connected, maybe some students,、uh, because you are, the Professor Imamura is a world leading tsunami engineering expert. So, I would like to pose a, a short and easy question to him、uh, for, <laughs> on behalf of you.、Um, 
uh, Professor Haga mentioned mm. the importance of uh, ignorance, uh, what we don't oh, know yeah. uh, to the next generation. Right. But uh, in a tsunami science, mm. what do we know and what we don't know, <laughs> didn't know? Uh, does, can you <laughs> answer in a very easy way to understand by okay. the students? Yeah. So uh, before they making an answer, actually, I was born in Yamanashi. There's no tsunami, actually. I know the name of the tsunami, word of the tsunami, <laughs> before the coming to the Tohoku. Uh, but uh, in the, uh, my student of the force, I had experiences of the tsunami. Not directly, uh, but after the tsunami in Japan Sea. So I uh, understand the terror of the tsunami at that time. And now I uh, try to make answers. <laughs> so the word of, word of the tsunami now very international. Uh, and this is uh, unusual big wave. So this is normal. So not related to the climate uh, or ordinary event uh, or phenomena on the earth. And so we have actually many, many uh, mechanisms to generate a tsunami. Actually, not only earthquake under the sea. So landslide and volcano, it happened this year. Uh, Tonga uh, volcanic eruption generated a tsunami and affect not only near field, but far field in Japan, US, and Europe. So actually, we should remind the, some, some variety of the mechanism of tsunami. So some of them we already know, but the others not know, especially including the comet impacted. It's very real. <laughs> so we know, but we don't know the mechanism. And yes, we have the uh, technology uh, to make a simulation, uh, so to pre predict. Uh, the tsunami behavior after the earthquake uh, and some uh, phenomena gen generated tsunami. So we can predict the height of the tsunami or inundation area of the tsunami, but we don't know the some kind of damage. Uh, so uh, destroy the houses and some infrastructure and the change of the topography. Still, we are challenging. And so total damage by the tsunami uh, not known. But 2011 uh, tsunami provide us many, many important data. So we are now still starting to run. <laughs> so I hope uh, students understood uh, this question. Uh, there are many ways to cause tsunami. We know earthquake causing tsunami better, but uh, the meteor causing tsunami or the landslide or volcano related tsunami is yeah. not still difficult. And that's the second part is the simulation is available and a good estimate of the arrival time height of tsunami, but the causing damage because it's a human uh, uh, structure, human developed structure, maybe it's more difficult to combine the uh, human and the natural phenomena together. My second question mm. is uh, for the densure load related Denture, activities. Yes. Then uh, because again, the topic is about the use. Yes. It's densure load, uh, uh, organization as an organization promote some activities uh, towards youth uh, mm -hmm. and you have a uh, many museums uh, in, in the network but uh, if you could pick up some of the activities mm -hmm. uh, targeting for the youth uh -huh. if there's any please uh. yeah uh, thank you very much uh, actually the our activity of the dental road not limited to the youth actually so anyone will come uh, to visit and learn uh, by looking directly at the site and talking uh, with the people uh, in the affected area but especially for the student and the young people so please know the event at that time so not only the some exhibition, but also talking with the people, with the people, and visiting and uh, walking uh, around the uh, coastal area uh, to see that some kind of to topography and some kind of the evidence or trace of the tsunami. So still we are remained some traces. So get the, some kind of uh, image. Uh, so. Uh, if you look at uh, some video and the photo, we, we understand partially, 
But if you are on the side, so three, actually, uh, three dimensional and very uh, complicated ge geometry, and uh, maybe you can imagine the uh, uh, of the uh, tsunami uh, in your <laughs> brain. So this is important, I think. So this is rather a yeah, message to the young people, the youth that are not just visiting a dental related museums or facilities, but to walk, to <laughs> view by yes. your eyes, to yes. experience yes. the sight, uh, and you feel something uh, more uh, yes. in addition to the yes. um, video or the exhibition yeah. I, uh, materials. Yes. 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 Any message to the young yes, people? <laughs> uh, the last, last one. Yeah, right thank you very much. So maybe... Uh, it, how can I say this science and technology always uh, how can I say uh, improving step by step so we try to find some solution or find some actual fact but still in the process but the process is very important understand uh, what happened uh, on the earth so it, many, many difficulty and problem are existed, but to try uh, to the, uh, solve over overcoming and uh, in the aspect of the not uh, nature, but also human and uh, social uh, aspect <laughs> in the sciences. Thank you very much. That, that, that is an invitation for the youth, the high school students, <laughs> or young people to join the research. <laughs> jo join us. Yes, welcome. <laughs> welcome to. Yeah, thank you very much, Professor Imamura, for your presentation yeah. keynote. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Yes, thank you. So I'd like to move ahead to the part one of the, um, um, today's event, which are the uh, presentations by museums and on how tsunami and disaster museums communicate with young people. So we have uh, four speakers. Yes. The first speaker is Mr. Muhammad uh, Azur, the uh, general manager of the Aceh Tsunami Museum in Indonesia. So by, this will be uh, by the presentation. Yes, it will be a, take, take a few minutes to start. Yes. Hello, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Muhammad Shabutra, head of uh, Aceh Museum Tsunami. I would like to introduce my museum to young generation of the world. That will be presented uh, by my friend, Mr. Irwan. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So uh, today I would like to present the, my museum that was designed as a symbol of Indian Ocean earthquake and tsunami disaster of 2004, which is used not only for recreation, uh, but also as education center and escape building in case of another tsunami happen in the future. So uh, next. The Tsunami Museum in Aceh was built to commemorate what happened in Aceh in 2004, which caused hundreds of thousands of people died and hundreds of thousands of others lost their home, uh, left homeless. Next, Rumah Aceh, as escape hill by Ridwan Kamil, designed by combining modern concepts. So this is the design of the museum. And Achenese local wisdom, which is adopted the traditional Achenese house, which at the same time is resembles a ship, which is protruding funnel. So this is next. So uh, this is uh, the many view of the tsunami museum. So the first, uh, it was built by the concept of the Rumah Aceh. Okay, and then if you see from above, it resembles the sea wave, and from the inside picture number three from the from the bottom there is a room emitting the light of God and next is the escape hill and the design of the outside reflection of the saman dance where everyone hold hand together and also 
for the public park. Next. Okay, this is one of the time when the museum was uh, started. Next. Okay, the museum of the tsunami museum has many function. It has the function of mitigation, and it has the function of ed education center, and as recreational space, and also evacuation. So we need to make this museum also. Uh, appealing for the children for recreational so they, they want to visit the museum not only as uh, mitigation next okay this is uh, the number of visitors year by years from 2013 until 2022 uh, a slight de uh, a lot decline in 2020 and 2021 okay next uh, due to the COVID-19 okay so the people who visit the museum uh, Almost all people, not only young people, also uh, old people, on, uh, also many local tourists and also international tourists, especially from Malaysia and Southeast Asia. Okay, next. Okay, everyone who come to the museum is expected to know what happened in the past after they finished uh, touring the museum. And uh, they were expected to know what should they do in the future in case of other, other tsunami strikes. Okay, next. Uh, this is uh, some of our collection outside of the museum. Next. And in the in the middle of this year, we have held three temporary exhibitions. All of information to create the exhibition was from interviews with survivors, and also various sources such book, such as books and research results. Okay, next. So this is our, the next is our permanent uh, exhibition. So the, it's, it's quite dark because it resembles what happened during the tsunami. So when, when people get outside, they, they, they know about what happened during the tsunami. Okay, next. Okay, so uh, next we will show you some of the activities that have been done in Tsunami Museum in Aceh. Next, please continue. So this is one of the annual activities carried out, carried out at the museum. Uh, it called Smong Box. This activity invited hundreds of school children to learn disaster and mitigation in museum. Uh, Smong is taken from uh, the local arts, uh, storytelling arts, uh, which includes some of the story, include uh, the story of how the tsunami happened. This is uh, take from part of Aceh in Simulu. So many of the people in Simulu survived the tsunami because they tell the story from generation to generation from this art of small. Next. Okay, uh, and this is the opening activities of temporary exhibition titled Animal Instinct. Okay, not only human, yeah, only uh, especially children and the sign of disaster can be also felt by animals. So animal usually, uh, felt the disaster before people do. Okay, next. Okay, so uh, every day, the Tsunami Museum is crowded with school children who wants to learn about the, the, the disaster in the museum. Okay, next. Okay, this is, all, there are also many events that the Museum Tsunami hold. So, uh, such as trip at night in, in the museum and creating a temporary exhibition. So this happened every year uh, in 26th of December. Next. In 2011, Japan Corner has been inaugurated in the Museum Tsunami of Aceh, which attended by government of Wakayama, Japan, Yoshinobu Nisaka. Next. Uh, so to commemorate the tsunami, children in Aceh and children in Japan created a painting that depicts their hope for next 10 years in their city. So we also remember the World Tsunami Awareness Day every November 5th and also the Japan tsunami on March 11. Next. So next we will show the video. Uh, this video shows us about the evacuation drill that held by Aceh Tsunami Museum involving school children near the museum. This simulation carried out at the Tsunami Museum because it is one of the place, one of the escape building. 
so when the tsunami the tsunami happened, they can go run uh, to the museum uh, if it happened again in the future. Please start the video. So the, te the teacher and the uh, museum employees lead them to the top of the museum where they can find a uh, safe place. Okay, next. Uh, so uh, this is how school teacher teach disaster awareness, especially tsunami and earthquake to their students. They create a song about how to evacuate to make it easy to remember, uh, such as uh, similar to the song before. So, but this is more a modern song. Okay, please start the video. This is kindergarten student. So basically, it tells it tells the student if the earthquake happened, they have to cover their head and hide under the table and stay away from uh, a glass object. Okay, next. So this is uh, activities when the Aceh uh, Tsunami Museum hold uh, in Japan commemoration, and then uh, some activities like seminars will also help. Uh, next. So uh, this museum also implemented uh, the program like Sekolah Aman Benjana or Disaster Safe School, which uh, works with other schools to make sure that when disaster happens, the school stays safe and the children can save themselves. Next. So during the, uh, the COVID-19, the museum was temporarily closed, but we still did a virtual tour as a form of online promotion media so that the visitors were able to go to the museum, able to experience the museum in spite of uh, their disability to go to the museum. Next. Okay, and this is the last museum commemorate the 11th Japan tsunami in 2022. Okay, thank you. Uh, next. Thank you very much for this uh, for this uh, opportunity that uh, that you give us. So I think this actually very beneficial for humanity, especially in creating the generation who are aware of disaster. Hopefully, this conference will continue uh, in the future that uh, to help other people. So that's all from all of us. Uh, thank you. Yes. Okay, that presented by us. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Azwar, for your excellent presentation with a colleague. Okay, from Indonesia, now moving to uh, uh, Hawaii. The Mr. Walter Dudley, uh, the co-founder of Hawaii Pacific Tsunami Museum. Um, he's going to show us the video, I understand. Our big question at the Tsunami Museum is how does the museum reach out to young people? One way is by providing special tours to school groups at the museum, both groups from Hawaii and from the mainland. Um, also giving online presentations to college students and I've done interviews with students in Los Angeles and presentations for students even in Seattle. Another way is by participating in school evacuation drills. One of my former students you see here in the middle ran their own tsunami exercises and they found out that there was confusion not just among the students, but also the teachers and the administrators, and that the uh, official evacuation route was unsafe. 
Here you see in the red square, this is their school. The official route is in blue here. They would leave the school and head toward the ocean and then onto a main highway with lots of traffic, follow the highway even closer to the ocean before they could finally head away from the sea. She got permission to make her own route, which went directly away from the ocean, was less than half as long and took less as half as much time, the entire time heading away from the ocean. Unfortunately, um, oh, oh, by the way, up on the wall in her room, she also had these steps, these posters showing all the steps necessary for an evacuation. So that even the students who were just daydreaming would memorize all the necessary steps. Sadly, when she left the school, they went back to their old official and what I consider unsafe route. Another way that the museum tries to reach out to young people is by featuring true stories of the heroic actions by young people that saved lives during previous tsunamis here in Hawaii. Here you see Herbert Nishimoto, a 10th grade student at Laupahoehoe School. There's the school before the tsunami. And uh, he camped out over the weekend and then on Monday morning, when the tsunami struck, he'd just gotten up and he heard a friend yell, tidal wave. And he watched the first wave withdraw. And then the second wave came in big enough to smash a canoe shed by the shore. Then he watched as the second wave withdrew and the third wave began to come in. And what Herbert described as terrifyingly huge. He was lifted up by the wave, sucked into the ocean, and deposited on a reef. He found himself floating amid debris, accompanied by sharks. This is what the school looked like after the tsunami destroyed it. Um, he gathered some debris together and made his own little primitive raft. And then he saw two fellow students trying to stay afloat in the swirling water. He pulled them onto his raft. And at about one that afternoon, a seaplane spotted them and dropped an inflatable life raft. There you can see them in the life raft. Um, they climbed into it and they didn't have any fresh water, but Herbert saw some floating coconuts and grabbed them so they had coconut milk to drink. And they began drifting up the coast all day and into the night. And the next day they were spotted by someone walking along the shore and two Hawaiian men swam out and helped bring them ashore. So this is picture was taken just before they were rescued. So the boys survived thanks to the heroic action of a high school sophomore. Another story of heroic action it took place outside Hilo. This is an aerial view of Hilo. The tsunami museum is down here. The 1946 tsunami really hit this part of town extremely hard. But the area outside of town where a lot of people lived was also very heavily impacted. The Nakagawa family lived in a little Japanese tea house right on the shore. The tea house was right here, where it's now a county park. And uh, young Larry Nakagawa had just gone downstairs to wash up for school when he heard a strange noise. And then his brother yelled, tidal wave, get up on a tree. So his older brother shoved him and their father up on a tree. Then his brother climbed up and wrapped his arms around their father. And this is the third wave coming in, a photo taken right next to their tea house. And the force of the water began to pull on them, and Larry's brother felt that if he continued to hold on, he might pull his father and his brother off the tree. So he let go, and he was washed away. Larry thought that he had, had, had lost his, his brother. This is the spot today. This is where the tea house was, and these are the trees. But as soon as the tsunami was over, Larry and his father climbed down, and discovered that their mother and their aunt and the older brother 
had managed to climb a nearby tree and they'd all survived. But Larry thinks that he and his father were saved by their older brother, another young hero. The next example is the 2009 South Pacific tsunami that struck Samoan American Samoa very quickly after, here's the epicenter of the earthquake. And these are pictures taken in American Samoa where the tsunami was, was huge and caused tremendous destruction. And you can see that the waves were as high, tsunami waves were run up was as high as 12 meters in some areas. So the week after the tsunami, I went out there to conduct interviews with tsunami survivors in both Samoa and American Samoa. And we learned from these interviews that once again, it was training in school and then the actions by young people that had saved many lives. And we're going to highlight these stories in a new exhibit at the Tsunami Museum that we're going to be putting up this next year. But to quote a village chief, um, the kids were running around saying, tsunami's coming, tsunami's coming. And the old people followed them up to safety. And the chief asked them where they learned about tsunamis. And they said, they learned at school. So once again, an example of when young people led the way and saved many older people's lives. But that does not mean that all young people are so aware of the risks and dangers. This is a shot of the same tsunami coming ashore in Hawaii on the Kona side of our island. And these are young people, obviously, who've gone down to watch. So we really need to be able to target both young people, but also older adults and even visitors to our islands who have, may have no knowledge of tsunamis. And we need for you young people to help us find the best ways to educate young people and then to lead the way for future generations. Mahalo nui loa. Aloha. Thank you for this uh, presentation from Hawaii. Uh, he will join the discussion later. Uh, the third presentation will be done by Ms. Uh, Lachan Kong and Thonsip, uh, director of the Thailand Tsunami Museum. You have the floor. The sound is not coming, so just a moment. Sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah, My name is Rachani Gon Thong Thip. I am the director of the Thailand Tsunami Museum. I would like to say thank you for the UNDDRR, um, Tohoku University, IRIDES, Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan, to uh, invite me to a uh, very valuable uh, conference, the first World Tsunami Museum Conference now. Next, please. Next, please. Um, I, I would like to say um, my um, heart feeling. I'm uh, very glad that uh, I got an email and that said you are confident we were talking uh, with uh, the, the, the next generation, like uh, the museum with the young people, because uh, I would like to uh, explain our museum. Our museum is in Thailand and is uh, very, uh, very small museum because we have no um, support from any um, organization. Like uh, we stand here 16 years now, but without many support from the government or other org organization, only um, the committee that um, share our money to uh, set up for the first museum. After that, um, we we think uh, we have to to do something that can uh, uh, make like a sustainable museum for the future. Because if we we rest um, by only funding when the funding is is uh, 
no more. That means the museum have to close too. We we hope our museum will uh, have very strong activities and can um, make very good thing to the society for the as as long as we can. The next, please. For uh, Thailand tsunami, we uh, we got effect from the um, tsunami on 2004, and uh, it's have like a t 14 country that got effect from 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 that event, and the Thailand is a um, very strong effect too. The next slide, please. And um, for the museum, we set up by the. Um, our own money from the committee that uh, all is the Thai people, and we set up on uh, 2006. And uh, our purpose is uh, have two purpose. The first one is to increase awareness and knowledge of the tsunami and natural disaster. The second is to help and support to uh, to the local children that um, our, our commitment to to do for the museum because. Um, for other project in uh, our society that um, have a lot of um, focus to the adult and the young people is the, the one group that uh, not much focusing for for them. The next please. And here here is uh, our picture of our museum is uh, uh, we have two floor. The first floor that. We have the photo, videos, and um, the exhibition. And the second floor, we have the real photo that uh, we have four rooms, video in um, in Thai, German, English, and French. The next, please. By with our money support, but. But we can do uh, many activities for the society that that we live, and we got um, uh, award from the government, from the uh, national so social welfare and the Ministry of uh, Social Development and Human Security as the uh, very good uh, strong com uh, contribution to 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 the society. The next, please. And uh, for whole year, we open from nine to nine, and we have uh, no holiday because we think every day is very important. And every day, if you have the visitor come to visit our museum, that we can share our knowledge to to other people. The next, please. And in the museum, we show ex uh, exhibition, animation, photo, uh, uh, cinema video. Tsunami survival story and how to survive a tsunami and tsunami uh, warning sign because the the visitor that come from around the world that uh, visit Kaulak area that uh, uh, very good um, uh, tourist to, tourist place they they need to know how to survive to the tsunami how 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 to live if something happen again and it's very important for them the next place. And for the society, we we shared uh, our knowledge and and our work to to the society. The next place, for the young people, we have a lot of a lot of program for for the children like, like the youth leadership and how to prepare the children for for this after or after the tsunami. If something happen again, what what they have to do? What what they need to do? The next place. And uh, the slide, please show uh, 13 slide. On on the 13 slide, that uh, when I got a very good opportunity to to go to Japan. The next slide, please. Uh, when I back to Thailand, I I learned from Japan to to do tsunami evacuation drill for for the children. And now we we do uh, one at least once a year for, for, for the local children. That are uh, very important because the government do for adults only. The next, please. 
And for the young generation, we, we have tsunami storytelling from the museum uh, for whole year. We have a lot of children, a lot of young people visit to the museum. The next slide, please. And the next slide, please. The Thailand Tsunami Museum with the young people, and we we have uh, many photo photo to show. The next slide, please, and and you can show for for other photo tools. For whole year round, we we have a lot of children come to 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 visit the museum, and we can share our knowledge, our our um, story that the, the the children can can prepare for the museum. Um, and please go to the slide number six, 69, uh, 63, please. By introduction uh, China of the Japan Embassy in Thailand, uh, Jaika invited me to the, the museum director to, the, uh, to attend the first World Tsunami Museum Conference in 2017. And um, I got chance to meet with uh, Sensei Anawat Sapasi, uh, that he worked for Erides and Tohoku University now, and it's a um, very good time, a uh, uh, good chain for for the museum that he he have very strong heart to 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 support to the the museum, and his knowledge can help us a lot. And I would like to say thank you for him again, and again <laughs> because he helped us a lot for for this strong uh, academic and uh, to the the. 64 and he um, introduced me to other to other um, uh, professor from around the world that uh, is very important when we we, we we are the local we stay in the local but we have no knowledge and uh, network is very important for us that we can share for our society and uh, for our museum, we, we hope we can uh, be the center of the knowledge that can uh, 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 take to the local children and, and other person. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So uh, we have been touring the, from uh, Aceh, Indonesia to Hawaii, Hilo, Hawaii, then um, Thailand. Now coming back to Japan, so Ms. Aki Kawasaki, uh, she's a guide of the Tsunami Memorial Hall in uh, Unosumai Kamaisi City. So she, you have a floor. Thank you for the kind introduction. I've been listening to English, and maybe some of you are now relieved that we are able to hear Japanese. I will continue to speak in the Japanese language. And I've come from Iwate, Prefecture, Kamaishi City. My name is Aki Kawasaki. I would like to introduce the facility to which I belong and also share my experience and also to describe what kind of programs we have uh, built to benefit the youth. And this is where I belong. This facility, after the Great East Japan earthquake 2011, it has been installed in order to hand down the stories from the tsunami to future generations. In order to protect our lives, we have had to find ways uh, to uh, reduce lives lost and also prevent disasters and we are here to play a role. I would like to just first describe where we are, Iwate Prefecture. This is uh, north of Miyagi Prefecture within which Kamaishi City is here. It's on the southern side of the prefecture. The population is roughly about 30,000. Kamaishi City is an animal with steel and uh, fish and rugby. And Kamaishi City is also known for the Rias Coast, which constitutes a very complex and uh, mountainous coastline. 
And because of this uh, topological structure, this is a uh, tsunami prone area. And this is Kamaishi, and here we're looking at the, the disaster. And there have been 1,064 victims, lives, uh, of which lives lost were 775, and those missing, 152. And related deaths have come to a tally of 137, and destroyed homes come to a tally of 4,282, which uh, describes the scale of the disaster that has struck Kamaishi. So when you look across Kamaishi City, this is an area that has been affected dramatically. But there is one or one group of people who became well known, and these are the children of Kamaishi City. Right after the disaster has been held as the miracle of Kamaishi, but now it is described as an event that occurred in Kamaishi City. I'd just like to go over what has happened. When the tsunami struck, most of the children were at school. And right after the earthquake struck, they escaped to higher ground. And that is how they were able to save their lives. They have evacuated right after the tsunami. And that has come to be a well-known event throughout the rest of Japan. And as a result, students who were at school saved their lives. However, the school, because of the tsunami, has been entirely destroyed. And this is an aerial view of the area where I lived. This is an area called Unosumai Town before the tsunami struck. So when you look at this aerial uh, map, it will give you a pretty good feeling of how close we are from the ocean. And the school that we used to commute to was also in close proximity to the ocean. Unosumai Elementary School and Kamaishi High Higashi Junior High School, there were schools that were built adjacent to each other. And I was commuting uh, Kamaishi to Kamaishi Higashi Junior High School. And this is where the tsunami struck. And we escaped along the, the hills in the direction as described with the red arrow to higher ground. And right after we have evacuated, I'd like to describe how the city has changed. So at one glance, you will understand that the city has been defaced entirely. This is a very flat and also low-lying area where there were many homes that were concentrated in the area. And because of this, the disaster, the scale of disaster was also huge. And so what, and this uh, picture describes how we were evacuating. This is Kokosai Shono Sato. It's a welfare facility. And we see people evacuating to higher ground. And I was also evacuating part of this. I was with a, I was holding hand in, in hand with a third year elementary school boy as I escaped to higher ground. And then, this is a 50 meters of altitude from the sea. And this is right after we evacuated. The students are seen here. And right after we reach higher ground, we uh, witness the waves crashing through. And through disaster prevention uh, studies, we came to understand about the mechanisms by which disasters occur and also how we should protect our lives. However, never did we, or ne never did we witness a tsunami of this scale, and this is the first time that I've actually witnessed a tsunami. And what I thought at that time was, my life would be over. To some extent, I knew about the tsunami and also disaster pre uh, prevention. However, when I came face to face with a major tsunami, I was left blank. I had to first come to grips with what was happening. But what I had to learn at school helped me. So after I witnessed, after the tsunami occurred, uh, instantly and automatically we escaped to higher ground. And as a result, to even a higher ground, uh, 44 meters above, ground, above sea level, we escaped. And all the students were saved. This is what I experienced through evacuation and also the activities 
disaster prevention learning before the uh, tsunami struck. That has helped me to devise the programs at the Tsunami Memorial. And this is, a, of course, uh, open to all visitors. But on a personal note, I believe that it would be important to direct these activities to elementary school students, junior high, and also high school young people. And there is a, a, a guided evacuation tour. This allows the visitors to walk with us to experience what we went through as we evacuated, and I share my true experience. I have them share the experience so that they're able to understand what evacuation means and to take ownership and relate to the evacuation experience. To this end, we have a devices program, and the other is the Ono Samai Fuku, um, Memorial Stadium, and we have a, a study tour, and the stadium it stands where the schools used to stand. It would be a venue for rugby matches and also sports events, but also visitors can uh, also visit. And we begin by uh, telling stories about how this uh, Memorial Stadium came into being. 2019, the Rugby World Cup was also staged here. So from sports to disaster prevention, and from disaster prevention to sports. We will be able to look at the stadium from various perspectives, and we will be able to capture fans from various angles. And I would also like to guide you through this. Apart from the hands-on experience type of activities, there are also workshops that we host so that um, Participants will be able to learn knowledge, acquire knowledge. And there is a DR sports activities that is being hosted. So once an, um, something should struck, this is to allow the participants to be equipped with the ability to respond to various uh, uh, unintended activities. They can use uh, disaster prevention tools, or when something should occur out of the blue, uh, the students and participants will uh, try their hand at uh, how to respond, and they will have fun while working on this. And the second is this, to choose, have them choose items that are essential through group work. They will acquire learning. Simply put, it's about choosing um, evacuation goods. And through this uh, program, they will be able to enhance awareness of disaster preparedness and to also to understand or to tr really think through what's really essential for oneself and to prompt them to purchase or to take action. It will be a prompter. And then here I'd like to talk about as I engage in the program, what I'm attentive to has been laid out here. First of all is to try to be uh, try to be friendly and speak with a friendly voice without using very uh, sophisticated language that does not really sink in. And sometimes we just, uh, it just goes out, goes in one year and goes out the other. So we need to really um, be in line with the viewpoint of the uh, audience and then use expressions so that the listener will be able to imagine the situation more vividly by using very simple, down-to-earth uh, um, words so that it's easier to uh, conjure images of what happened. And also the third is to be interactive. Just by speaking unilaterally, it, the audience will just uh, uh, take it in, but that's it. It needs to be interactive, which means that I would have to try to feel my way through as to what the listener wants to really understand. So this is what I hope to achieve. It's not just to gain temporary interest, but to help children and those that are barriers of the next generation, especially the young, to find ways so that they will be able to protect their own lives. And that is where the priority will lie as I continue to engage in the activities. And that is all from my side. Thank you very much for your kind attention.
Thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, Kawasaki-san today, uh, not as a coincidence, uh, because she had this disaster education um, drills and uh, uh, preparedness activities before 2011 uh, tsunami, 12, 12 years ago, that she's here. If not, she might have not been here today. Uh, she survived the 2011 tsunami as a you know, real experience. So uh, thank you very much for your talk. And we have uh, some minutes to uh, remaining for uh, some interaction uh, between maybe me and you and uh, some uh, audience and uh, remote, uh, I mean the speakers in the remote. So I, I would like to go through the, some of the activities you mentioned regarding the um, interaction, the activities with youth. So the, uh, starting from the Aki, uh, Kawasaki-san's presentation, uh, you are doing the um, guided evacuation tour with youth and the uh, new stadium tour. Yeah, please come here, yes. And uh, some more activities, but also, um, I think it was interesting to walk, walking tour. The, you walk with the students, uh, some of the youth, to the, the evacuation route you took to, uh, the, together. Then, then that was very uh, interesting. Then uh, I, I uh, took some notes from the, uh, uh, some of the common activities, the both uh, Hawaii and uh, um, Aceh and uh, um, Thailand. You, uh, you talked about common word, but the storytelling activities. Uh, I think children or youth, um, if, if we speak some uh, difficult thing, they may not be interested. So we have to talk with them, and uh, especially young children with uh, interesting stories. Well, the adults too, if things are not interesting, we're not uh, easy to listen to that. So the storytelling, the real experience uh, for the disaster victims to talk about uh, their experience, the storytelling activities, it's very real, vivid. So that's a very effective way of uh, promotion. Um, play, song, music, evacuation drill, or eating together, drawing pictures, uh, those are the related, all, all related to the, some kind of a, being a, like cultural activities. Um, maybe not using brain too much, but uh, the do things and having fun, uh, something to impress your heart. Uh, that's really a cultural activities that I took it. And uh, I think the mayor of Sendai City mentioned uh, uh, create a disaster resilient culture. So the, some of the terminology common to me was this uh, cultural activities. So something fun to the children. And that, that's for the children. But uh, for, with the youth, maybe uh, junior high school, high school, maybe college students or the elderly um, youth, youth people, maybe uh, to doing activities together, uh, uh, something do, doing, experiencing together, uh, explore, ex explore something together, the way, way to find a safe route Together, that was Hawaii presentation, and uh, that by tongue watch activity, it, they found out some route is not safe for evacuation. So that finding something together. So those are the things I, I took it. But uh, do we miss anything? Uh, do, do you want to emphasize some more uh, activities related to the youth? If something you have from uh, more from Thailand or Aceh or uh, Kamaishi. Please, uh, you could mention some additional activities or something I may be missing. I'd like to identify some of the activities you're conducting with youth. So, Aceh, uh, Mr. Mohammed, uh, so you have anything to add? Uh, maybe connect, not connecting. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, the Miss Tonsip, Thailand. If we, you, you, you'd like to add anything on that? Yes, please. Yeah, yes. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Um, for our museum, uh, we, run, we run the project by, uh, with our money, but the, uh, the link that we can link to the local children is the tourists. The tourists come to visit the Kau, Kaulak area. And when they come to, to, to this area, um, many, many persons that come with a very good very um, high hard to share what they have to, to the local. And uh, when they visit to the museum, they have uh, entrance fee that support to the museum. And we 
we we told everyone that uh, your money go for the museum and go for the local children project too. And they is uh, so happy to to share with with the local children because uh, they think the knowledge of the tsunami or disaster this is very important for for the local people. And the uh, children is um, very um, uh, like a very um, they 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 are a very important group that we have uh, to to support them because the the children cannot cannot take care of themselves if have a tsunami and if uh, they have no no knowledge and if they 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 don't know the way to go and uh, some group of the tourists come with the the um, like a um, the 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 supporting to to the local school in in our area and the museum uh, we are uh, the the middle we are the hub to to link with the tourists and the local children and when the uh, children know the tourists come with a very good heart and they are the the um, the local people and we uh, they are the next generation for for our our area, if uh, they um, have very good understanding to the tourists, that means they will welcome to uh, other tourists that come to visit Kaulak, and it will uh, improve our society in the next future. And I would like to to say thank you to Japan again. Uh, you are you are many activity that. Uh, very good hard to share to other country by um, don't need anything back like uh, in this uh, conference you share your your knowledge you you share your time you share your money to the to to uh, other country that we can learn a lot from japan because uh, in thailand we um, we got very uh, important um, knowledge from Japan and very important experience from Japan a lot. And thank you very yeah. much again. Yeah. Thank you, Kupimaka. Uh, the interaction uh, with uh, tourists and the local people, local children. Thank you. Uh, uh, Walter, uh, your presentation was very impressive by video. The, there are some activities that youth are conducting together with you, like uh, explore the, the town watching activities to identify the safe load, but uh, it was not uh, safe and so on. So that any additional uh, things to, uh, in, in addition to the, what you mentioned in the video, uh, any activities, specific activities you're doing in, uh, as a museum with the young people, youth, you have anything to add? Well, we're actually learning from our Hilo High students, who you're going to be seeing in a few minutes, some of the best ways to approach working with young people. And this whole meeting has really heightened for us the need to find more ways to reach out to young people, because I don't think we do it enough, and we need to do more of it. Yeah, thank you. That and I'd like to thank all of you for sharing what your museums are doing. Yeah, that's the uh, purpose of this um, conference. Uh, I'm learning a lot today. Uh, Aki-san, you have anything to mention and besides what you are doing? Uh, you, you understand? Yeah. Thank you very much. Having listened to the presentation, I've f come to find that there is a common thread in trying to convey the story. And of course, uh, I've come to understand that we are all impacting each other so that we are uh, trying to tell the story. And in Aceh, we heard about uh, using a song to convey how it's important to really protect their heads. And also, Kamaishi, there's a Tenden Go story. And, uh, a region uh, also conveys the story by uh, songs. So that's a commonality uh, that was interesting. And from Thailand, is uh, you've mentioned that evacuation drills are important, and you've uh, begun to adopt that. So whatever we find that is uh, very effective, we could all share and also introduce so that we will be able to reinforce our disaster preventive preparedness. And hence, with the tsunami, uh, uh, museums, activities, we would like to really take in what I've heard. Thank you very much. Uh, 
She used the word tendenko. Uh, perhaps uh, the international participants uh, may not understand. Uh, this is like a saying over generation to generation in Iwate prefecture near the coast that when tsunami happens, um, people are supposed to evacuate individually, not waiting for others. So it's a uh, person by person should evacuate immediately without communication, I mean the, without talking, even among the family members, because it will be too late. So individually um, should evacuate immediately after the large earthquake. So that's called a tendenko for many, many years, generations they are having this word. Thank you very much uh, for sharing this. We have uh, uh, remaining minutes, but uh, I think we can finish um, in five minutes earlier to have a break. So let us have a break for five minutes. Then we come back to, the st uh, to this meeting. Um, five to five in Japan time. So the 4.55, no, 3, 3.55. 3.55 to come back to resume the, um, the panel discussion. Uh, so we have a five minutes break. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, or good morning, or good night from wherever you are. Uh, welcome back after the break. My name is Liz Molly. I'm working here at EDDES at Tohoku University, and it's my great pleasure to moderate um, part two of today's event. So we're having a panel discussion on the roles of youth and tsunami museums for resilience, um, continuing our conversation that we had um, in part one. And for today's panel, we have really, we are really uh, fortunate to have great panelists, including our friends from museums that we heard from in the last session. And also we're going to be joined by Dr. Muzailin Afan, who's the advisor from Aceh Tsunami Museum and also a director at University Shakwala. And we have back with us Mr. Walter Dudley from Hawaii Pacific Tsunami Museum and Ms. Rachi Nakorn Tongtip from the Thailand Tsunami Museum and Ms. Aki Kawasaki here uh, with me from Kamaishi City, Uno Sumai in Tsunami Memorial Hall. And we are also um, uh, honored to be joined from uh, with additional panelists, Ms. Yoko Sato, who is the manager of the Disaster Resilient and Environmentally Friendly City Promotion Office here in the city of Sendai, um, here with us today in person, and Mr. Yuji Kurihara, who is the director of the Japanese Association of Museums and vice chair of ICOM Japan. And joining us online, Ms. Hana Penok, who is the chair of the International Council of Museums Standing Committee on Disaster Risk Management. And in addition, we also are very excited to have our youth participants, who is really the meaning of today's event. Um, especially we have joining us here in person uh, four uh, young people coming from Niigata Prefecture. They, we are snowing here in Sendai today, so I think they're already familiar with snow from Niigata. Um, Buno and Chihara, Chiharu, excuse me, and Hinako and Haruto uh, from Niigata here in person. And we will also be joined online through the online connection uh, with students in Aceh, in Indonesia, um, Naira and Di Sultan and Muhammad. And finally, we also have youth, um, active youth in Hawaii, who, because of the time difference, will be presenting a pre-recorded message. But um, we're excited to hear from Hokulani and Kali and Seneca. And finally, we have one more youth participant here in person, uh, Qian, who is from China, but now studying here at Tohoku University. So we have really an exciting, um, combination of many different points of view and many different generations, and I think we're going to have a very exciting and interesting discussion. So first of all, I would like to invite our a new museum participant for this panel discussion, Dr. Muzailin Afan, um, who's joining us also from the point of view of a museum, but was uh, freshly joining us now. So maybe, uh, Muzailin, I could ask for your additional comments about the role of museums and youth, and especially if you have any other questions for or comments directed at our other museum friends in Hawaii or um, Unosumai in Kamaishi or in Thailand. So Muzailin, the floor is yours. Thank you, Prof. Elizabeth Mali. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity for us again to share and discuss in this important uh, conference. 
So yes, it is uh, very important to share the common uh, legacy and a common word of thinking that uh, from the previous uh, keynote speaker or remark that very important is sharing experience together, not only for us in the local, but now we have to share and our experience among our international colleagues. So as you can see that museum and youth is two things that is uh, similar. What I can say similar is these two things which is stand for the future. Prof. Ono mentioned that maybe in the 50 years uh, now we are sitting here, not anymore, but the youth, the museum still remains. So that's why uh, this is very important, how the youth and the museum to connect each other. And also if asking about the role of the museum, the role of the youth for the re resilient uh, society, of course, no doubt for this. And already uh, presented by uh, our colleague, Mr. Putra, and also from Thailand, from uh, Hawaii and Japan, what uh, already done right now in the museum is very much uh, related to the people around the museum, not uh, only the academician uh, researcher, but uh, very importantly is uh, the youth, the school children, uh, the common people coming to the museum, and also the museum have to proactive uh, learning and going uh, inside the community to exchange the lesson learned. So I take note to hear in some points like uh, already mentioned by previous uh, speaker. Uh, from Mr. Takai mentioned that museum is important place uh, to play the role for our next generation. And also one important is no one should left behind. So everyone, yeah, everyone should be uh, included in the disaster risk reduction. And also, Professor Imamura mentioned that the disaster will happen when we forget about this. So that means, yeah, of course, uh, someday in the future, everyone tends to forget about what happened long, long time ago, especially the tsunami. Tsunami, not uh, every time, not every year occur, but it will occur repeatedly occur in maybe 50 or 100 years, even more. So in this regards, museum and youth is the one who will uh, still remain in the future. So this is very important. So we understand that now, what is the role of the youth? We understand that the youth at the moment, right now, is different maybe with the youth of my age. So maybe they have a social media, yeah, they have uh, internet. So campaigns, social media campaigns is more important rather than also uh, common seminar like we are doing today. This seminar also important, but maybe nowadays social media campaign is more important than the youth is very, very much uh, engaged in this one. So I think that is uh, what uh, we can learn from the youth and what we can uh, expect from the youth and the museum in the, in the near future. Thank you, Prof. Prof. Lips. Thank you very much, Muzailin, for bringing us the really key important concepts of the future, really for the future disaster, disaster risk reduction of the role of the museum and the youth. And also, as we are getting older, maybe we are expecting the youth who are, are already advancing beyond what we're capable to take, to take things to the next level. And I think it's also something that we've seen um, from the other presentations. Um, we already had a chance for some of the um, presenters to discuss your your comments at the end of the last session, but if there's any additional comments from um, Walt or Ratina Korn or Aki, if you have anything else to say related to your expectations of the youth, I give the, if anybody wants to add an extra comment, I would give you the chance now. Any, yeah, go ahead, Ratina Korn. Thank you very much for, for, for my share again. Um, for my own experience, I. I am the student leader in Thailand, and I think uh, the 
or activity that uh, run for the uh, young generation is very important because they will come up for the next gener generation and they will be adult in the future. And for the Thailand experience that I, I, I have a very good op opportunity to, to, um, to work with the uh, Sensei Anawat Sapasi that he worked for the Gok Platong research project. And we learned um, in, in Thailand, actually uh, in Thailand have a tsunami happen in, in our, uh, in our um, uh, history, but it's not, uh, um, it's not uh, like a, a for the next generation that's why we lost a lot um, in 2004 in Thailand lost a lot because uh, most of Thai people we never heard about it actually uh, we we have uh, our history that uh, tsunami have been in Thailand at least three times like a 600 years ago but um, very um, very um, important thing in uh, like a Morgan people we we tell that story to the next generation, to the uh, their song and uh, their um, children's story. That uh, if have something happen again, like if have the big wave, if you stand on the land, you have to go to the higher land, and if you in the sea, you you have to go to the deep sea. That uh, that why the Morgan people not lost in two thousand four because they learn from from their their story they tell uh, their story pass to the next generation and it's very important that we have to learn from uh, our our story and we have to pass on our story to the next generation too. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much for that really important comment to reminding us to think about indigenous knowledge and the lot knowledge of the place and how that is really passed on to the next generation. Um, and also tying it back to your own experience of being a student, uh, supporting the disaster, to change from your role as being a student, supporting the disaster affected area to be then teaching the next generation. So I think it's very similar to Kawasaki-san's experience of being the student and then the role is changing to now teaching the next generation. So I wonder if you have any other comment related to that topic or that experience, how it was for you. Thank you very much. And now I'm from the position from a student to a storyteller, and I think that we're now um, seeing that cycle established, and that has left an impression in my mind. Initiatives that were taken at the school in my days are now being succeeded to the next generation. It's been graded, upgraded, and now the senior high school, junior high school students are taking this as an as a as as a norm, for taking for granted, and that's also being taken up by elementary school students and the high schoolers. The senior high schoolers are trying to convey what they experience to elementary school students, or when there's a rugby event, they're also trying to do the same. So we're seeing high schoolers uh, being very active, and the junior high schoolers are uh, watching them, and then learning from that. And the elementary schools are watching the junior high school students, and they have this uh, feeling that when they grow up, they want to do the same. And we're seeing a more number of uh, children uh, come on board. And therefore, the teachers in the past who have conducted uh, disaster preparedness or prevention studies have now uh, conjure the very foundations by which this is being happening. Thank you so much. I think that's a great example for all of us to learn from about the how knowledge transfer can be systematized and become systematic and become uh, more routine in a way for sustainable transfer of the lesson. So yeah, thank you so much. Um, I think it's also related to um, some comments that Walt was sharing in your presentation about how the evacuation route was kind of a new route was found, but then it wasn't really systematized. So I wonder if, Walt, if you have any other um, comments, maybe from uh, your perspective on towards the younger generation or anything related to what we've been talking about? Well, I think one of the problems is that the administrators who tend to be an older generation tend to um, use if it ever happens instead of when it happens, because it's only a matter of time. 
And every year that goes by without a tsunami means that's one year less till the next one's going to strike. There's seismic gaps all around the Pacific that are just waiting for those earthquakes. So um, I think we need for the young people to push upward with their te- get their teachers together. I worked at another school with a drill, and it was actually the, the teachers who helped convince the principal to pick a different, safer route and a, different, a better way to evacuate. So I think the students working with the teachers can maybe change the, you know, the bureaucracy on top because we need to do that for them to take this seriously. Yeah, thank you very much. Maybe um, I might be putting words in your mouth, but maybe we need to get out, sometimes get out of the way of the young generation and let them be in front and let them kind of push us because they are, they are active and they're ready. But at the same time, of course, we have a role to support them. Um, and to work together uh, to make change. So I think I would like to uh, thank you very much again for our museum, our museum friends, uh, for your, all your insightful comments and sharing your uh, passionate work and the, the, the work of bringing the reality of the disaster knowledge to the young generation and working with the young generation. Um, so thank you again to our, our first uh, four panelists. And now I'd like to move to the next part of part two. So um, for our our next panelist, first I would like to invite Ms. Yoko Sato, the manager of Disaster Resilient and Environmentally Friendly City Promotion Office of Sendai, City of Sendai to give the presentation. So uh, Ms. Sato, the floor is yours, uh, joining us today in person. Thank you. I am from the Sendai City office, and it says that um, I was called the um, head of the um, uh, environmental friendly city head, but uh, I'm just uh, working there, and I'm in charge of the um, the Arahama. Uh, elementary school, which is a tsunami museum, and I'm in charge of that. So how has Sendai Arahama Elementary School affected the youth? And um, as I said, new challenges, construction of the city center earthquake memorial center. This is a, we're going to start this new construction. And then, lastly, I will talk about the expectations for younger generation. So this uh, ruins of the Great East Japan earthquake, the Arahama Elementary School. After the earthquake, we made a recovery reconstruction plan and we came up with the 10 important project. So this is one of the project that is the memorial project. And uh, how will Sendai recover from the earthquake? We must hand down the memories of the earthquake to the next generation and uh, make a sustainable society. So we heard from the experts. They proposed that we need the coastal area where there are still the damages remain, and also the um, inner city where people gather. So both areas uh, must be the um, memorial, part of the memorial project. And so Arahama Elementary School, and also There is also the ruins of the house um, bases, and so that is also part of the memorial project. After the tsunami hit the elementary school, there is uh, still a mark that um, the tsunami hit this this high. So we can, and also Arahama area is half agricultural and half fishing area. So it has its unique culture and its traditions. So people who live there, they have very close human relations. And the, this elementary school 
opened in 1873, so people had seen school as a symbol of the community. So it's not just to communicate the threat and the lessons learned from tsunami, but uh, we would like the school to be seen as the symbol of the community as well. So it's been five years since the opening of this elementary school memorial, and about uh, 400,000 people visited. That means an annual visitor of 80,000 people. So. Making use of experience and memories from disaster in the future, there are a lot of people from all over Japan visiting this elementary. First of all, how do we communicate to the local children? The Sendai、um, Educational Committee has made a lot of effort to conduct、um, education. to the children about the lessons from the earthquake. And,、um, They made a new guideline of disaster risk reduction education, and they have always made improvements. And all the students, that means the students in elementary school and middle school, they are distributed with the supplementary reading, reader book for disaster risk reduction education, and also. They developed disaster risk reduction education yearly guidance program, and visit to this elementary school is part of that. So, this is called Sendai's disaster risk reduction education. However, this goes on in daily life, and when the Disaster strikes, how should they, they should be able to have the coping abilities? So they must protect their own life, but also to cooperate with their families and people in the communities. So protecting oneself as well as protecting everybody else. So that is the purpose of this disaster risk reduction education. So the People, well, the children go on a field trip to Arahama Elementary School. So, all the schools that visit the elementary school will be provided with a bus. So, from this fiscal year, all the field trip、uh, going schools will be given a bus. And、um, targeted visitors、uh, will be from fourth grade to sixth grade elementary school students. And there's a teachers and students、uh, give feedback. So I brought some feedback. The fourth grade. That's about nine year old or ten year old who were born after the earthquake and tsunami. He said, I've never experienced a tsunami, but was able to learn about how terrifying tsunami can be. I'd like to visit the museum again with my family. And the fifth grade student said, I decided to think about what can be done now. So, It's very important that the fifth grader, youngest fifth grader, thinks about what he can do in this um, time. Um, and then look, changes in students' attitude from the perspective of teachers, and that is by visiting the actual elementary school, students were able to understand the damage caused by tsunami. And they were interested in the community and culture of Arahama. And also, during the disaster drill that was organized after the field trip, it seemed that the students were thinking of various ways to protect themselves. So I think their disaster reduction education really is、um, good to include this kind of field trip. 
So right now, the Sendai city office is taking the lead. However, there's another example. It's called Hope for Project. And it's a special event held every year on March 11th since 2012, mainly by alumni of elementary school and junior high schools in Arahama area. So they have this um, release balloons containing flower seeds inside, and then also there's a musical performance by artists with connections to Arahama. Currently, Arahama is not inhibited by people because it is um, uh, designated as a dangerous um, place to live. But um, these um, people who used to attend schools, they gather again and conduct this kind of events. And when about 300 or 400 people visit this elementary school and with this uh, event over 1,000 people visit the elementary school. Now changing a subject, um, as uh, Sendai Mayor mentioned, there is a word that we call create a hub of disaster resilient culture. So as a direction of construction for city center earthquake memorial center, and we need such center in the city center, and the city came up with this kind of policy that is plans to construct the center in the Aobayama area and build his castle and also build a music hall. So there will be kind of a synergy effect with the castle and the musical hall. Basic philosophy of the center is to become the creative hub of disaster resilient culture. So this disaster resilient culture, how do we um, create this center, actually experts have gathered and they came up with a proposal. And they say that we recognize that disaster will eventually hit us. And so that is the high, already the precondition. And a society, social culture with the ability to recognize when disasters are about to strike and have the means to overcome the impacts of disaster even when one occurs. So this kind of um, disaster resilient culture must be spread not just in Sendai but across Japan. So. So what is a disaster resilient culture? We are often asked of this question. It's difficult to say just in one, but um, we make um, dikes or um, we make towers or the stairs so that people can climb the dike and also preparing on a regular basis, that is preparing food and drinks just in case the disaster occurs, and also learning about disasters and lessons of the past and uh, connecting them to the future, like Tsunami Den Denko, um, that kind of story and also archives and also seeing some places with where the building shows the height of tsunami and also survival skills skills required for survival and also on the far right there is a um, conductor after 311 in Sendai, just um, after one week, 
there was a memorial concert, Sendai Philharmonic Orchestra gave a concert, and uh, people who suffered from tsunami, they were really cured, and they shared their feelings, and um, the people uh, felt much relieved. So music or literature or pictures, or like in Ukraine, Banksy has drawn some pictures. So that kind of um, art and culture has a power. So in the future, we hope that we can communicate this kind of art and culture to UN and um, museums in other parts of the world and universities. So what we expect for the younger generation is, as people have been saying, that um, science is improving and people, uh, science is learning about new things. So with every phenomena, we need to analyze, and we will always um, learn new things. And nature has more to offer other than bringing along destructions. This is the Tsunami Museum Conference, so I'm just focusing on tsunami. Tsunami mostly um, destructs the coastal area, but people live along the coastal area because there's so much um, benefit living along the coast. Um, so f seafood and n nice views. However, um, so there is also damage, but also tsunami can offer other things just than damage. And Japan has four seasons and a lot of rain and um, because of the typology, um, there's tsunami. However, we have benefited from the nature. So we must understand this, but also we must learn the updated scientific knowledge so that we can learn about uh, how we can overcome natural disasters. So I think I would like the people to understand this multilateral or multi aspect. And we have tsunami museums in other countries. And if you go abroad, you will find different um, food and different um, different uh, lifestyles, so we can learn from that as well. And then I th wrote at the bottom, thinking and acting based on disaster-resilient culture. So how can we overcome disaster? So that's the wisdom or taking a multiple perspective. Like when you are buying something, you should be aware of whether it will that uh, be of use when you have no power or when you are hit by disaster. So small things like that may also lead you to new business or maybe lead you to new research. So I don't know. So in Japan, we have a saying that um, the um, natural disaster or disaster may uh, lead to opportunities. My friend, she stopped wearing uh, high heels, even in her work, because if she had to evacuate, she has to run with her ch child and so she's now only wearing sneakers. So maybe a shoes, functional shoes, and uh, that is fashionable. Maybe that kind of shoes can be developed. 
So I hope that uh, the young people will think of disaster um, in a multiple perspective. Thank you so much. Uh, Ms. Sato, thank you so much for your wonderful presentation um, and sharing all the great work uh, done by Sendai City, especially showcasing the um, Arahama Elementary School, which is a really wonderful resource for disaster education and how that is localized, linked up with a disaster education in local Sendai City, um, wonderful example. And also, I really appreciate the um, connection with the disaster, bringing it down to the daily life and bringing it down to disaster culture. Rather than thinking of disaster as something separate, I think every time we can integrate that, that's always great. Um, and so now it is my pleasure to introduce Mr. Yuji Kurihara, who's the director of the Japanese Association of Museums and vice chair of ICOM Japan. So Mr. Kurihara, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would like to thank you for the kind introduction. I am Yuji Kurihara. And uh, I am the vice director of Kyoto National Museum as well. I know that time is limited. I would like to talk over two topics. First of it is about the national network of DRR. After the Great East Japan earthquake in 2011, and we ha are within a uh, Japanese cultural heritage uh, as Association and we have a uh, rescue. We conducted a rescue activity for national uh, heritage, and we have indicated we have uh, put up a promotion for to engage in uh, a system by which to put our emphasis on disaster uh, prevention. We have uh, received a. Uh, uh, subsidies from the cultural agency. We have done this for six years. In 2020, it has become a permanent installation as a, a center dedicated to uh, protecting uh, cultural heritage. And now that is a permanent organization, we are now able to rest assured that we will be able to engage in activities. And we are looking at, of course, history and also art museums. But not only that, but also uh, libraries, archives, and also natural history uh, museums as well as the scope of our activities. Because a tsunami and also disaster have uh, implications on all facilities. And therefore, we are looking at not just the genre of cultural properties, but we go beyond that uh, to look at natural history collections, such as fossils and other specimens, and also archives, uh, as well as uh, films and uh, literature or libraries. And therefore, we have conducted a, uh, a network, a very broad cross sectoral network that includes libraries, archives, natural history museums, and research organizations. And there are currently uh, 25 organizations are part of this network. And we hold regular plenary meetings. We hope to be able to share on the activities that are taken here in Japan with across uh, the border. But the theme today, the younger generation, unfortunately, we do not have uh, many opportunities by which we are able to capture the opinions of uh, young people. And therefore, we would like to uh, expand on the scope of our activities as well as the depth of our activities as we listen to the uh, views of younger generation. It is important that we, of course, rely on the younger generation who, who will be th there in the future to reflect back upon our activities. And therefore, it is important that we capture their opinions. And the next perspective is about an international network as uh, observed in IECOM DRMC, International Committee of uh, Museums. It is a professional um, gathering of international museums. And there are 37 uh, international committees that are part of this. And once every three years, there is a gathering that is called the ICA meeting in 2019. It was uh, international committee was uh, founded in Kyoto, the ICOM uh, Kyoto 2019. And the DRMC, Disaster Resil Resilient Museum International Committee, was formed. It is the newest and the latest international committee. And I happen to be one of the board members of the DRMC. And it was September of last year. 
in which the DRMC, uh, the first annual conference, was held in Japan, in Tokyo, and also Iwate. The main theme was international disciplinary, uh, excuse me, interdisciplinary networks for cultural heritage risk management that Japan is uh, currently pursuing. And we've decided to engage the international society into a, uh, into a dialogue. But as you're well aware, this has been conducted in hybrid format, and therefore participants of, for OFCs have been joining us online. We have received a wide audience, and also not only in Tokyo, but we also uh, moved our venue to Iwane, Iwate to um, represent Taka, the city, where we have captured various uh, views. And Dr. Matsuoka, head of the UNDRR Kobe office, also gave a uh, presentation on World Tsunami Awareness Day and the World Tsunami Museum Conference. We have received many participants uh, from uh, various circles and participants visited Iwata Tsunami Memorial Museum, the storage of affected collection, the new Rikusen City Museum. At the time, the museum was just preparing for opening, but uh, it was uh, especially uh, opened uh, for our preview. And the Rikuzen Takata City Museum, November 5th, was finally opened. And November 5th is World Tsunami Awareness Day. And so in the affected areas, there are many uh, museums that are either renovated or starting to open anew. I do hope that this will allow us an opportunity to engage in various discussions. I do hope that many more uh, new uh, young members will become involved in ICOM activities and also World Tsunami Museum Conference so that we will be able to together raise awareness of uh, the cultural heritage disaster risk management. And in the Japan Committee, there's an International Museum Day that we, by which we host a symposium. And we have uh, invited the young experts to present their views and has been well received. When you think of conferences, you think about, of course, the government offices or the top uh, leaders, which means that uh, there will be very aged senior members who will be joining us. However, we have uh, been uh, attended by young members. It's been very, very active. It has also offered us an opportunity to think about what lies ahead. We will also dedicate ourselves to lend an ear to the views of the young because it is important and crucial to think about disaster preparedness. And we do, I do hope that um, the knowledge as well as the capabilities to this end will be enhanced in the future. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Kudihara, um, for your really great comments and presentation and linking us, bringing the expertise of museums to this conversation. So I think we have so much knowledge going not only forward, but also connecting back to the past and how the knowledge is um, preserved and conveyed and related to the local culture, um, deep cultures of museums in Japan and bosai disaster risk reduction, but also with bringing it to the international network. So I think we have um, so much uh, to learn more from you and maybe it's very exciting new networks. I'm, I personally, I'm also interested in joining those, those meetings in the future and I'm sure our other participants today also may, will be very interested and then we look forward to hearing your um, comments and conversation with the, with the younger generation later on in the panel discussion. So next I would like to invite uh, Ms. Hannah Pennock who is joining us online who is the chair of the International Council of Museums Standing Committee on Disaster Risk Management. Um, Hannah, are you available online? If you are, the floor is yours. Yes, here I am. Um, since I am on a mission in Berlin, Germany, uh, the connection in my hotel is not so good. And that's why I just close my video now and you will hear my voice only. Um, thank you so much for inviting me to your very important conference. Um, I will speak to you shortly about the International Committee uh, and the International Standing Committee of ICOM. As uh, Yuji Kurihara already said, ICOM is a, is a large international non-governmental organization uh, with uh, more than 40,000 members in over in about 140 countries. Um, 
which is in fact a huge network. Um, and back in 2004, because of the tsunami, ICOM realized that they needed uh, a task force, a disaster risk task, fo task force. So that was established then. And it has been a task force ever since. Only later it changed, its, changed into a, a standing committee, which was appointed by the president. And it's a, a, a committee of about 10 members all over the world. And I had the honor to chair this for the last uh, three years. Uh, and what we do is we, we work closely together with ICOM Secretariat in Paris. And we also work closely with the International Committee, DRMC, as Yuji uh, said. Um, we get in touch, when a disaster happens, we get in touch with people in the area or around the area, usually ICOM members, to see what happens uh, and to know the damage and the needs and in what sense ICOM can, can help in connecting people in, in making an assessment and trying to find funds to help rebuild afterwards. Um, and I think the strength of ICOM here is its enormous network of museum professionals and specialists in, in fields like museum security and disaster risk management. Um, right now, ICOM headquarters in Paris is central. And they work with us, and we support them, um, and, and they use the ICOM partners, the ICOM network and the partners in the field, such as uh, the, the Blue Shield, the Cultural Emergency Response, Alif and other organizations that also can uh, apply, can, can help with funding. Um, and if you ask me what recommendations I could have regarding the youth, well, of course, prevention is much better than disaster risk management afterwards. Um, so raising awareness, of course, that's what you have been talking about all the time, I'm sure is uh, raise, raise awareness among young people. But also, I think um, right now, what I see everywhere, young people, let's say the students twenty in their 20s, they speak English so much better than, than at least my generation. And I think that is a great help uh, to make them participate in a network and make sure that they find each other internationally. And I, I would recommend that to make young people part of the network. Uh, and that would be my short presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much um, for your comments and your uh, insights. And I think, yes, that's a very important message for the young people who are listening today and in the room. We're, we're counting on you if you haven't noticed it yet. It's true. Um, and speaking of that, next we're going to move maybe most exciting part of our event today and our panel discussion is to hear from the next generation. So first, I would like to invite our guests who traveled here from Niigata Prefecture. Please come on up to the stage. We have Buno and Chiharu and Hinako and Haruto. They've been involved in disaster risk reduction activities and we're looking forward to hearing about it. The floor is yours. Good afternoon, everyone. So we are students from Niigata, and we have attended to a event called World Tsunami Awareness Day Summit. And then we are here to present what we've learned and what we did in the event, and also the study tour that was held before the event. So I will start. So during the study tour, students have participated in activities willingly and listened to, pro and listened to experts to learn about disaster prevention and disaster mitigation. And then as a part, uh, we went to a place called Yamakoshi Village, which is a place that experienced a tremendous damage by the big earthquake called Chuez earthquake. And in there, uh, we learned the severity of a natural hazards and also the significance of disaster prevention uh, by observing the collapsed landscape and houses in there. And then furthermore, on the last day, 
uh, on the last day, all students took part in a disaster prevention drill that was held by Japan Coast Guard and the Ministry of Land in and Infrastructure of Japan. And then we've learned how to act properly when disasters occur, and also how to help others when the disasters have happened. And then throughout this, these experiences, uh, we raised awareness towards uh, natural hazards. And also, I learned the uh, importance of disaster uh, prevention and mitigation as well. And throughout the study tour for the summit, we realized how it is important to spread information uh, about problems of the present emergency shelters and newly developed emergency food. Uh, these days, new types of emergency food, as well as ways to preser preserve them, are being introduced, but their importance is still not well known. And in fact, it was not until we joined the study tour that uh, we learned a lot of many emergency food, such as ones which can be uh, cooked just with water, and ones which can be cooked, uh, what we, ones which can be stored as long as five years. So for Japan, an earthquake-prone country, those types of food will, are very useful in an emergency. And on the other hand, we also learned that there are still many problems at the emergency shelters, uh, shelters regarding uh, privacy protection and hygienic management. Therefore, we should make an effort to ease the burden of the victims at the limited space in the shelters. For example, the cardboard dividing dividers used in shelters now still has room for improvement. So we thought that high school students like us should learn the current issues with disaster prevention in order to may take the first step towards improving our future disaster prevention. Thank you. During the summit, we exchanged opinions on disaster prevention, mitigation, and reconstruction. For disaster prevention, we found out the keyword experience. In order to take appropriate action, it is effective to accumulate experience by using virtual reality disaster simulations. Then we will make our own evacuation manual and run the evacuation drill on our own. For disaster mitigation, we believe that we can reduce the damage if everyone gets appropriate disaster information regardless of nationality, language, and generation. I think that it is necessary to enhance support with various ways such as pictograms. For better reconstruction, we realize that community is necessary. There are problems with reconstruction plans because some of them do not reflect the uh, local residents' opinions and also they do not reflect the lives before the disaster occurs. So creating opportunities to discuss disasters regularly, regularly at school or at the local region will lead to a better recovery. We read to a conclusion that learning about disaster prevention, mitigation, and reconstruction, sharing the knowledge, and making actions are important. Throughout the summit, I got the impression that all the participating high school students were very active in the discussions. As I deepened my discussions with high school students, not only in Japan, but also around the world, I realized the importance of raising awareness of natural hazards and enlightenment activities. I was also able to reconsider my attitude toward dealing with natural, dealing with natural hazards. On the other hand, it cannot be said that there is a high awareness 
of the danger of natural hazards from a global perspective. The characteristics of natural hazards differ greatly depending on the country or region. However, I believe that awareness raising activities play an important role to mitigate damage caused by all natural hazards. I would like to communicate what I learned at the summit as a disaster prevention leader. That's all for our presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much for your great English presentation. We are I'm sure we're all very impressed with your activities and your passion and your energy and your English skills. So let's give them another round of applause, yeah? So, and then, <laughs> great. So um, next we also have youth joining us from Aceh in Indonesia online. We have Anissa and Naira and Di Sultan and Muhammad. And I think they, maybe some Aceh friends also attended the World Summit in Niigata. So um, let's hear from our friends in Aceh. The floor is yours. Hello? Can you all hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Maybe someone online can also let them know that we can hear them. Okay, thank okay. you. Yes, we can hear. Okay, shall we start? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I like to introduce myself first. My name is Anissa Nur Latifah. I am an 11th grader in Mansatu, Banda Aceh. Today, I am going to talk about my disaster museum-related experience from the point of view of a high school student and also a youth from Aceh. The purpose of my talk today is to represent what my generation's view on disaster, disaster museum, and disaster-related experiences. First of all, I would like to give you an overview of the 2004 Aceh tsunami which is one of the worst disaster of 21st century and probably one of the deadliest earthquakes of magnitude 9, followed by the deadliest tsunami resulted on December 26, 2004. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2004 Aceh tsunami have left an unforgettable memory for Achenese people. Since then, the story of tsunami have always been told through generation, and it is time for us, the new generation, to take those stories as a lesson for the brighter future. One of the best sources of this historical event is the Aceh Tsunami Museum. As you, all, as you all may know, it is located in Banda Aceh, Aceh, Indonesia. The Aceh Tsunami Museum provided lower fees for students like me. Not only that, it also held a lot of events regarding disaster for students like kindergartners to high schoolers. The museum would always improve and develop through years. I remember going there when I was in elementary school compared to going there in high school. I was a bit shocked seeing it becomes very modern and more stylish. There are a lot more technology to it. For example, we can click a screen and it will play information about the tsunami, which make it more easier for younger, younger people. A lot of teenagers these days also love going there and make a video like a vlog or a TikTok about their experiences in the new Aceh, Museum, Aceh Tsunami Museum. As a youth disaster ambassador, the museum has helped us a lot regarding the, the disaster in Aceh and what we don't know about it. I hope that the Aceh Tsunami Museum will continue to grow and captivate the hearts of the current generation so that most of us that have fami families or parents who are traumatized by the 2004 Aceh Tsunami will, will be able to face all future disaster with good preparation, whether it physically or mentally. I also hope the Aceh Tsunami Museum can display and educate the public in more creative and interesting way. 
In conclusion, do not let a traumatic disaster haunt future generations. Instead, let it be an important lesson for the future from the past. And one of the most powerful ways is to preserve evidence for future generation so that they can anticipate upcoming disaster, which is through disaster-related museum. Thank you for listening. I hope you will gain an insight regarding this matter. Thank you very much. I think we're all excited to visit your museum. For those of us who have been there, yes. we know it. And for those of us who haven't been there yet, I think we hope to visit it someday. And thank you also for your youth and energy. And maybe you need to show us how to use TikTok for, um, but that's yeah. just a good, good example of, the, of future youth-oriented activities. Um, so for our next youth uh, voices, we have a pre-recorded presentation from our friends in Hawaii, from Hokulani, Kelly, and Seneca. So you can go ahead and show the pre-recorded video now. Hi, I'm Hoku, and I'm a senior at Hilo High School. Hi, my name is Seneca, and I'm a freshman at Hilo High School. Hi, my name is Kelly, and I'm a freshman at Hilo High School and we are representing Hawaii. Our visitation to the Tsunami Museum. I've lived in Hilo my whole life and only went to the museum once before we came over to learn about it and represent it. I went on no field trips in elementary school to learn about tsunamis and was pretty much in the dark regarding them. Going recently opened my eyes to how much I didn't know and how much learning I would have to do to be tsunami ready. While there, I explored what they had to offer. There was information everywhere. You learned something new every turn you took. It was interesting seeing all the different exhibits and things they had in the museum. They had videos you could watch, posters you could read, pictures you could look at, stories you could learn from, as well as the different artifacts they had. The interactive tsunami simulator was a fun way of learning how tsunamis are formed. It had you evaluate the tsunami, decide to evacuate, guess how much damage it would cause, and much more. A very effective tool to get people interested in tsunamis. Much like Hoku, I haven't been to the Tsunami Museum many times, but our opportunities with representing the museum allowed me to fully take in all of the information there. Another interactive machine that caught my eye was the Tsunami Wave Simulation Machine. The machine applied the pressure given to reenact how waves distribute that pressure over far distances. They did this by using real water and a model of downtown Hilo. This helped to show how waves of different heights and strengths could affect the city in the event of those waves becoming strong enough to be a tsunami. Growing up, I never really visited this museum until this opportunity came along. I was not born here, but even when we moved here, we never took the time to go visit it. Even in my elementary schools, we never went out to go visit and learn about tsunamis. But just this recently, when I went to the museum, one thing that I really remember and really liked from visiting the Pacific Tsunami Museum was their posters on the wall. There were many different kinds of posters and information, but what caught my eye the most were the posters of the tsunamis that have happened here in the past how the tsunamis have affected us, how we overcame it, and it also showed us pictures of the damage that was done to our island. How to reach out to young people. Creating a story. We interviewed around 30 high school students from the Wakayama Prefecture. We asked if they knew the story, Inamura no Hi, and if they did, when and where they learned it. All 30 of them replied that they knew the story and that they had learned about it in elementary school. This way of teaching is effective and should be adopted for the Pacific Tsunami Museum. When we attended the Iwate Tsunami Memorial Museum Exchange event, the Japanese students there taught the story of a girl surviving a tsunami through Kamishibai, showing that books and stories are a way to help teach young people about tsunamis. We would create a story about a local community member's experience with tsunamis using visuals like Kamishibai does. Sort of something like the book shown in the pictures, but much more child-friendly and with more visuals. We would then help teach young people about tsunamis and tsunami preparedness 
and how important disaster preparedness is, as a tsunami can happen at any moment. This story would be given to a certain grade in elementary school, such as third grade, where the students would read the story and then come to the museum and build off with what they learned in the story. Social media. Social media is key in connecting to young people. We, just, we should start posting informative posts and videos about tsunamis and the museum to get young people interested. Short videos are key in gathering interest, showing videos on fun things at the museum, such as the wave machine and the interactive tsunami creation map, as shown in the video, to get young people to come and check out the museum. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Go straight dead center. You should always start running uphill. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, oh, oh my god. Oh. Damn. I thought that one of my ankles was <laughs> <laughs> okay, Advertisement. We can create commercials and radio ads on the tsunamis and the museum. We can also advertise to families with young kids to come and explore the museum so that children can learn and start thinking about tsunamis when they are young. We can also advertise to the tourists to come and check out the museum. The museum is in a prime location right on Bayfront, which is by stores where tourists shop. If we can get the tourists to start coming to the museum, more and more people will know about the museum and start to visit it. Ambassadors. We were given the grateful opportunity to present about tsunamis and tsunami preparedness at the Iwate Tsunami Memorial Museum Exchange event. Before this, all three of us barely knew anything about tsunamis. We were as clueless as the rest of our generation. But since getting into this, we have learned so much. Getting more young people to become ambassadors like us would be a good step in spreading information. The more young people there are, the easier it is to create events cater to young people and get their interest peaked. Thank you for listening to our presentation. Thank you very much. So um, we, we don't have our Hawaii friends um, online, but I'm sure that they're going to keep working hard to do their activities. And I'm sure that we're going to have a chance to connect with them uh, again in the future. And I think those are some really great ideas for how we can use the power of young people to get people to come to the museum, which is also a new uh, way of thinking. So for our last presentation during this uh, session, this section, we have Ms. Qian Yuwei from China, who's a current student here at Tohoku University, here in person. So Qian, please go ahead and come up to the podium. Hello, everyone. I am at the Tohoku University, and I'm studying here. My name is Su Xian Yuwei. Right now, I uh, am conducting research on the, the Tsunami um, uh, Museum. And today, I'd like to talk about my experience with the Disaster Museum. When I was in university at China, there was a project called uh, Red uh, Travel. And in 2008, there was a Sichuan um, earthquake, and there was a there is a earthquake museum in Sichuan. At that time, Sichuan province suffered big damage through this earthquake. However, with the reconstruction, this um, um, earthquake museum also became a dark tourism spot, and it attracts 14, uh, 14 million people uh, to the museum. Generally, people think that these museums were used for learning about disaster reduction. However, when I visited the museum, I became aware of one thing, and that is there are propagandas in the, by the government throughout the exhibition. At the last um, 
room, it says that uh, with the rescue after the disaster and the reconstruction after the disaster, this shows that the um, it's a new victory for the socialism in China by the communist party and socialism and the great motherland. So this museum also teaches nationalism, and it is used as a place of destination by the students' organizations. So it is not just a museum to show the disaster reduction, but it's also to teach about nationalism. So it has multiple roles. After that, I've always been thinking about the role of disaster-related museums. And now I came to Japan, and actually, uh, in my research, I visited various tsunami museums in Iwate and Miyagi. And for example, there is a um, the tsunami um, related museum, and um, I noticed that there are so many um, tsunami related museums, and there's uh, already more than 300 um, these uh, institutions and museums to hand down the experience about Great East Japan earthquake. And this is my personal view, but all these museums and institutions are very small, and the exhibitions are very much alike. And the videos and um, the VR, it's also very similar. And these kind of tsunami communication museums are set up in each region. However, there's no exhibition that really takes the advantage of the local community. Uh, I think each community should have its own memory of disasters. Uh, so I feel a bit uh, um, doubtful about these um, exhibitions. I hope that these museums, um, at these museums, the experts should not really monopolize the explanation, and I think it should include the youth and the community people. And um, I think that we can hear the local people actually explaining about the exhibition and that um, there could be discussion, forum for discussion, that uh, people who came to the museum, as well as curators and local people can discuss. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. I think it's a great, um, great reminder for us from the fresh eyes, new perspective of the Densho Khan, but I think, um, and. Also, we have another example of international power, young people speaking excellent Japanese, so thank you very much. Um, but I think, it, maybe it sounds very uh, direct, but I think actually this is, this is a shared theme across the presentations that we've heard already today. It's the work of the uh, 311 Densho Road is, and also related to our uh, museum network to try to connect with the culture and the history and the locality and also um, Sato-san from Sendai City to try to bring together, maybe we are already very advanced for technical knowledge and detailed scientific knowledge of tsunami in Japan, and we have many Denshokan, but we also have maybe other people also feeling like you, we want to connect to the local people and the, the local experiences, so um, don't worry, and we need your help. So your job is, is waiting for you. So um, thank you again to all of our great presenters. And I think we have a little bit of time to have a little bit deep in our discussion exchange with each other. So first of all, I'd like to ask from our friends from Niigata High School students how you have some, I think you have some expectations or some hope or some ideas, suggestions for our senior friends. So um, go ahead. Maybe you we have time. Each one of you can make a comment if you like. Okay, 
thank you for your question. Um, my idea is, is a little bit unclear, but um, please let me explain. <laughs> uh, uh, my idea is like I want to hold an exhibition of disaster prevention at our school so that we can provide students with opportunities to see pictures of like, affected areas and learn how um, destructive it was at the time. And also, um, I want to um, make a time for students to exchange their opinions and think what they can do in their daily lives. So, <laughs> sorry, this is not clear, but this is my idea. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and I want the museums to do more events for families and the youth and appeal some entertaining points to them. Uh, it's mainly because um, Museum is not uh, mu museum is very useful for increasing an awareness or gaining some understanding towards how to behave when a disaster occurs. But since there's some stereotype, I guess, for teenagers and young people, for for them not choosing to going the museum for fun, so therefore I think it would be better if there were more events for teens and families so that they can learn and act towards disasters appropriately in future and pass this on to a future generation as well. Thank you. I think you can, maybe you can plan an event at local museum. <laughs> I think they welcome you. <laughs> I want the museums to make more hands-on facility, like VR or something that we can experience this, how tsunami is strong. So yeah, and we can think about like those disaster prevention or mitigation or reconstruction as our own problem. I think that it is necessary to make efforts to fill natural hazards on our daily lives. Uh, of course, ex exhibitions at museums are very effective, very effective, of course. But in addition to such exhibitions, I uh, sorry, I think it would be good if there uh, there were things that people could touch mm, on a daily basis without going museums. Mm, uh, for example, tsunami height are uh, displayed on utility poles or hazard maps uh, installed like storage signs and so on. And, and I think this will make us to raise awareness every day, every day because they are on they are in our daily lives. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think it's so important for us to hear your suggestions and please keep giving your suggestions also to your local museum. <laughs> I think they're happy to hear them. Um, I'd like to, to change the, the point of view maybe and maybe ask our, our senior experts to reflect back on the, what we heard from our, our very, very active students from Niigata and from China in Japan and from Aceh in Hawaii, and maybe um, reflecting on the most recent suggestion about integrating disaster into daily life, it really remind me, reminded me of Ms. Sato's presentation about how um, Sendai City is involved with that. So maybe I can ask Ms. Sato for your comment. First, it doesn't, any, any, any reflection on what we heard from the youth is fine. Well, thank you so much. So people around the world, the young people, I, uh, when we think about these issues, we just tend to do it amongst the adults. But today's topic is the youth. We're doing this for the future. So these young people who represent the future, we always have to hear from them. We should not exclude them. I strongly felt that when I was younger, 
well, maybe. Well, there wasn't uh, much social network. We never th uh, imagined that there would be this much technology. With COVID, now we can connect each other on, on online. Before that, we just had thought we had to meet each other. So I think the earth is becoming like smaller and we can communicate with uh, other people, uh, especially when people have good use of English. And you said that you want more fun and like game or maybe that Japan can use anime, its strength. So I understand that those are useful tools. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'd, I'd like to ask a similar question to Mr. Kurihara, if you have any um, thoughts for our, our, young, our young friends. Thank you. The Uwe pointed out a great point in Japan. You know, we have a lot of exhibitions or great music, audio, or VR. But some companies are making those. So if you just let them make it, it's all similar. But, I, but from museum point of view, museums, we have curators, we have researchers, and it's, um, they think that it's a place to teach. However, I think it's a place where we, discussions should take place. That's what we're saying. It's a common sense among ICOM. So, of course, we need some items that um, will appeal to people, but people then should have the opportunity to discuss. They have diverse values. They have different opinions. So it, people who actually experience disaster is impactful. And not just to listen to it, it's to uh, really have direct communication with that is one of the characteristic of the Tsunami Museum. Niigata High School people, they suggested that we should have exchange of views, not just to look at exhibitions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we're, we're getting close to the end of our session, but I wanted to give maybe the, the last comment to our young friends from Aceh. If you have any thoughts for um, international connection or any comments on our other presenters or other museums, if the students from Aceh, do you have any other comments or questions or feedback? Maybe, maybe, or um, Hannah, did you have any feedback for our young, from the, back from the senior point of view, any feedback for our young participants? Yes, yes, thank you. Um, well, as, first of all, as an ICOM, active ICOM member, I'm, I'm very happy to see how much museums are used as a means to, 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 to spread knowledge and information. And um, as a senior, I would say uh, we can pass over our experience and knowledge to the young people, but we can learn so much from the young, the youngsters too. I mean, there are so much, there are so many really bright young people that uh, can can deal with so many other things and can give so much more um, back to us that we should really um, exchange and and have this continuous contact among each other. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think that's a great kind of bringing us into reflecting on the overall um, panel discussion and also the overall conversation that we've had today, um, tying back to the importance of the future for the involvement of the youth and also continuing the museums for the future and connection to our daily life and of course to disaster risk reduction and how we raise the awareness um, in the terms of reality, experiencing the real place and the real objects and how those stories are told. And maybe there's not a single way to tell the story, but we need more ways. We need the traditional ways and we need the new ways and the new thinking. So um, I just want to 
wrap up this uh, part two of today's event. And thank you again to all of the panelists and especially our youth. We really enjoyed your presentation um, and everyone. So um, thank you very much. And I'll turn the floor back over to Professor Ono. So this is a lap up time. Uh, Thank you, Riz, for you are moderating very, very well to uh, attract comments from uh, everybody and uh, on time. <laughs> uh, very surprised uh, everybody with uh, this uh, level of English sto to, uh, spoken by the <laughs> Niigata High School and, uh, of course, Aceh and uh, Hawaii native. But, uh, well, we professors and teachers tend to think the students are the object to teach, but <laughs> we, we are not <laughs> teaching today. We, we have been taught by the students. And uh, when I was 20, I, my, my started speaking English was after 20 years old. So before 20, they were speaking like English like that was amazing. I was thinking maybe they should stay in Tohoku to be a student of Tohoku University. <laughs> okay, uh, can we have a screen to have the... Uh, uh, so this is not the uh, end of the summary, but uh, I started drafting the summary while you were talking. So I picked up some of the points but uh, this was until 10, 15, 15 minutes ago. So I, I have to work on more on this uh, summary. Um, but uh, let, let us uh, share with you the, what I captured as a, mainly the common points or something you talked uh, during the conference uh, today. Uh, I have uh, maybe more than 10 points, but I need to make a better summary. This is just a, a script I, I, I started. So first, the conference re-identified the important role, important role of tsunami museums and other disaster-related museums for disseminating and passing down information, memories, and lessons learned to the general public and the need of a networking of such museums around the world. The second point is the 311 Densho Road, as well as the uh, uh, World Bosai Forum and the ICOM DR DRMC, could contribute to develop a soft, intensify this a soft network of disaster-related museums, uh, tsunami museums around the world, and stimulate activities conducted by the youth. The third point is, it's important to transfer knowledge on disaster situation, including tsunami, not only what we know, but also what we don't, didn't know or don't know. The fourth point is, some of the, com some of the uh, common activities conducted by the participating tsunami museums were related to develop disaster resilient culture. Next, please. They are the culture, the uh, related ones, the activities. They are listening to um, storytelling, acting plays, and singing songs, composing music, conducting evacuation drills, and time watching, drawing pictures, eating together, joining guided evacuation tour, organizing disaster situation sports festivals, creating ka uh, kami shibai stories, using social media advertisement, advertising at the museum, for the museum, being used as uh, uh, tsunami ambassadors, and so on. So many activities are shared by the students. The six, such activities may become sustainable by being hosted, housed, uh, hosted by museums. Without some entity organizations, maybe those activities may not consist uh, many, for many uh, generations. So seven, the depending on the age, ages of the youth, the above mentioned activities would differ. Elderly students are to teach younger students. Knowledge transfer could be more systematized in, in, in that way. The eighth, the students and the youth are not just to be taught by the teachers or adults. Rather, students working with teachers might change the bureaucracy to create safer environment. The disaster is contributing to DRR. Youth are agents of change and have more role to play. Nine, the high school students summit on World Tsunami Day 2022 in Niigata, Niigata report emphasized the potential role and the capacity of high school students. And Achenis 10, Achenis high school students emphasized the important role of Ache Tsunami Museum and uh, proposed new activities, including preserving evidence for future generations in a creative way. I, have more, I should list more activities in details, but I just captured a uh, uh, limited time. The 11th, the Hawaii high school students shared their innovative outreaching activities associated with Tsunami Museums, including, um, next please. Yeah, including some more uh, activities I, I should list. The 13, 
Uh, comparative studies, this is the last point by the Chinese student. Uh, comparative studies over disaster related museums could identify new findings, including certain messages, commonalities, and differences, and trends. And uh, this is very helpful. The last uh, point was the objective way. Uh, we, 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 let us realize the, um, what we didn't understand before by the different eyes, different um, people, different culture to identify these uh, differences. So, so this is so far I captured. I, I, I will work more later uh, with these uh, the, uh, summaries of other um, groups. So uh, this is the end of the uh, summaries. If, if you have any comments, uh, please let us know. I, I could include uh, further. Then uh, let me uh, come to the um, concluding remarks that, uh, yes, we learned a lot today. And uh, as I said, the students or the youth uh, the change of the agent, and uh, we are stimulated by the students, and uh, I think adults, or the operation of the tsunami museums, uh, all of them should include, input, be more inclusive for youth activities, youth opinions, uh, youth, uh, uh, you take um, maybe use of the youth uh, power to uh, further empower the, empowering the uh, tsunami museum uh, and also its activities. So I, I would like to end uh, this uh, um, fourth uh, tsunami, uh, World Tsunami Museum Conference. Um, it's uh, a little before the time, but uh, I, 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 this is a good meeting. And thank you very much for your participant, participation and, and such a snowy, cold day in Sendai. And also for those people who are listening uh, um, beyond, within Japan and beyond Japan, thank you very much for your participation. And uh, let me conclude this uh, Tsunami Museum Conference. Thank you very much. <laughs> and bye-bye all. <laughs>